ready for the pain and feel completely dirty when you're done. Irvin, are you ready for blast off? <laughs> I told you not to eat Indian food, man. How are you blasted off? <laughs> Prematurely. We are the Three Guys Ranch. Arvin, Mike, and Phil. I already feel good. Call us at 855-693-GUYS. And if you didn't understand that, let me tell you to English, because that was Puerto Rican. You are listening to the Three Guys Ranch. 855-693-GUYS. That's 693-4-8-9-7. 693 <laughs> All right, and we're back. Three guys rent with Arvin, Mike, and Phil. You can uh, check us out at the three guys rent.com if you want to call us. It's 855 693 guys. You can uh, Twitter us at the three guys rent. And uh, before we get started, because I know we have a busy day, we have an actual uh, guest coming into the studio. I want to talk about Superman. Now, I'm sure that you haven't seen it because you're too cheap to go out and watch it. But uh, I know for a you fact... You're going to feel like that, man? Already? No, no, no. Phil, Phil's a nerd and a geek of the group, so I know he watched it for sure. But I know you didn't. And I had no interest in going to see it. All I got to say is it is a good movie. I'll give it that much. It is a good movie. But in my opinion, it's not a Superman movie. I think it's it, it falls more under. I think it's more of an alien movie than a Superman movie. Isn't that, isn't that kind of the similar uh, review you gave uh, Iron Man three? Iron Man three also wasn't wasn't and there's and again I don't want to say that there's flaws in the movie. It's just and I don't want to say that it necessarily should have followed the comic book line. But it, it's 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 the more when I left the theater. I was content because it was a good movie, but I was a little dissatisfied because I didn't feel like it did justice to the Superman name and brand. I think above any superhero movie, Superman is the staple, is the staple of all super of all superhero movies. So I think it definitely fell short with that. And the more I thought about it, the way that it ended, I don't know what, what the hell you're trying to say over there, but the way that it ended, I think was just... It kind of changed your view on on what uh, Superman is capable of doing. Did it say the end at the end? No, no, oh. no, no, no. You're not gonna watch it, right? So we can throw around spoilers all day long. Yeah, but what about the the two listeners that may be wanting to go see it? Yeah, they're both in this room, so I'm gonna say no. But uh, the big the biggest issue that I had is Superman kills somebody in the movie. Okay, first of all, I reject you totally. I never, ever will go see a movie with you again. Okay? Superman shouldn't be killing anybody. And he uh, killed I'm somebody. just telling you right now, I will never go see another movie with you again involving any of my favorites. But he's he's a superhero. If he's fighting crime and he's got to kill somebody, he's got to kill somebody. No, no, no. Because the number one thing that always comes through is nobody should kill no superhero, especially Superman. You understand this is 2013. So he should kill somebody? Dude. Okay, so the... the the ideology that you grew up with 92 years ago is I'm not dead. that old, first off, okay. but okay. So, uh, yeah, I'm never going with you again. You know, it, it's and, and and I've realized why the movie is as, as dark as it is. Uh, Mr. Nolan, which did the, the Dark Knight, also had a hand in this movie. You thought the movie was dark? Com- and, and again, I've said it before. I think all the superhero movies that have come out recently aren't kid movies anymore. Which is fine if they're trying to get the audience that the original Superman movie had. They're not. Well, then who the hell are they going after? Because you. Th- there was there you was no moron? there was no character development. The more I thought about it, it was almost just thrown right into the movie. Well, th- uh, but the only thing that I've read is it is it is there like a combination of all previous movies? That's kind of I'm, thrown yes, into this. It's one? three movies in one, in my opinion. It, and again, if you go back to the. One were the other Superman movies back in the 80s. Yep. It's like the first three movies of that in one. And I think the first two are probably done in the first 40 minutes. And then it now, goes on from there. Christopher them. Reeves walks, walk in this one? You know what? That's about the only thing that wasn't in this movie. Oh, okay. But, uh, yeah, I think it was a little bit rushed. I think, um, I think for a reboot, I think it should have been done better. Again, it was a good movie. I'm not telling anybody not to watch it. Go watch the movie. And if you're going to watch it, definitely watch it in the theater. But I don't necessarily say that it's it's a Superman movie. You're unbelievable, man. You're unbelievable. <laughs> that didn't even come from Phil. 
Wow. Um, I take it you disagree. I think you're as you're as you're as big of a dumbass as the guy who insulted Melissa McCarthy. That that's all I got to say. Now, did he try to get you to get popcorn from his bucket? Oh, I didn't go anywhere <laughs> near him in the theater. Once oh. it went dark, I uh, yeah, there was two people between us, but I didn't have any of the issues that Arvin had with the movie. I said, you know, it was a little long. I thought the fight sequence was a, a little long, but um, and that, that's the other thing. It was it was, and again. I'm all for violence, wow, here we go. but it was the same fight over and over. One guy flies into the other guy, and the other guy flies back right into the other guy. I will murder you violently. <laughs> Thank you. Alan's getting good over there with, with, the, uh, um, with the audio so, files. So you didn't like it? No, no, no. I did like it. I did like it. Well, I'd go you, back this, and this watch it. This is the movie it. he liked. Hmm. I'd go back and watch it again, but for it to be a Superman movie, I do think it fell a little short. It's just... Isn't that what your girlfriend tells you? I fall a little short. She might. She might. But uh, yeah, I, I wish you would see it. Go see it. Hell, I'll pay for the ticket for you to go see. I, I just have no interest in superhero movies, man. So you haven't seen any of them. You haven't seen Iron Man. You haven't seen uh, I, Batman. I saw Iron Man, uh, the first one. I saw it at home. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, I haven't seen any of the other ones. So. I know going online there there's supposedly talks about the title to the next movie which is supposedly Man, well, I know that they're going to make one, but I don't know if it's been thrown out there. I think it's just people speculating, but they're saying that the title might be Man of Tomorrow. Supposedly? Suppo- suppository. Okay. Which is funny because then that goes back to the same statement that nobody's supposed to kill anybody, especially Superman. Comes from it comes from Superman. Nothing. Ah, I got nothing for you. All right. What else you got then? Uh, not not when it comes to Superman. Like I said, I enjoyed it. Um, saw it over the weekend. Thought, you know, as a reboot, I thought it was great. I thought the casting was good. I thought uh, having uh, Russell Crowe be jor See, and I think that was very strong. I, I think I was a little unsure about Superman in the beginning, but I think as you sit there and watch the movie, he, he definitely grew on me. I think it was a good choice to have him as Superman. Um, now, Russell this Crow, guy, was, was this good. guy like a an unknown, basically, or... The, the, I, I don't know him outside char- of this movie. The, yeah, the you lead film? character. Henry Cavill, yeah. I don't know what else he's done. Um, so. Um, it, uh, well, it did great at the box office. So. What was yeah. the final number? The last number I heard was 113. Yeah, it did okay. It didn't, I mean, it did great for a June release, but it didn't do. Well, it's the biggest June release, period, if I'm not mistaken. But uh, uh, do you have any idea what the last number was? Again, last I night I heard. I saw 121 somewhere. Okay, so I, I know last night I heard 113. But in comparison to. Um, the Avengers and everything else, it felt dramatically short. But for June, it, it was it was the best June opening they've ever had. Somebody would like to cuss you out on line one, apparently. What else is new? Caller, go hey, ahead. Superman was hot. Hello? Hello? Yes? Superman is hot in that movie. He's hot in that movie. Yes. I, I'm sorry, out of everything that was just said, that's your comment? Yes. He's very good looking. He fills the suit nicely. Apparently, he's from the Tudors. So, I think that's what I she was looking. I think to, I, I'm going to have to start watching that show. I think she was looking at his tutor. You know, no, no, no woman has ever told uh, told Arvin that that he f- fills his suit nicely. <laughs> Who cares about Arvin? <laughs> oh, oh, that's oh, I gotta where. Thanks. You know, what? He, was, he was also in the uh, Count of Monte Cristo. He played the son. He played the son who was Albert Bondego. Oh, that's have, where I've seen him. I have no. <laughs> Yeah, I, I realized the two of you would never see that, but uh, he was. And so, casa lo conocen. Please, please tell us more about the, all no, that. No, 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 no. Isn't that a sandwich? He doesn't watch science fiction, and you don't watch anything cultured, so there's no, there's no point in having a discussion. No, I like, I like science fiction. I like Star Trek, and I like Star Wars. Which do you prefer? Star Trek. Yeah. So I mean, even even Lois Lane. But the original movies, not. Not not the ones now. No, have like, you even like, seen the ones like the, that came out? Like the Wrath of Khan, Khan, all those man. Have you seen Have you seen the last Star Trek? No. What about the one before that? Yes. So about two years ago. Okay, so you it takes about two. So it hmm? takes you about two years to you see saw the movie. relaunch. Yeah. So I mean, even Lois Lane, I think, was dramatically different. I, normally, when you go back to the old school movies, she's always who, uh, now. Who played her? Is is it is it a, a hot? I, I knew I knew I had seen her, but I couldn't pinpoint it till till. Yesterday, if you ever saw uh, Ricky Bobby, Talladega Nights, mm-hmm. the girlfriend that he ends up with at the end of the movie, it is the same girl, right? 
I'm like, I know her and I know I've seen her in something, but I couldn't pinpoint it. But she's always been like a supporting actress. So it, it kind of falls the same as is on this one. But it took me a while, but that's what she is. I've always thought she was cute. But there was uh, no Ricky Bobby in this movie. There was no Ricky Bobby unless he was driving around in the background somewhere. But um, I was even a little iffy about her. But I do think after even reviewing that, I think it did fit well because she's she's a strong Lois Lane. She's, she's tougher. She's smarter. I think back in the 80s, we were just used to her just falling off a building and crying for Superman. And here comes Superman. It wasn't like that in this movie. Um but again, I just I feel like it was just a little rushed. You know, for somebody who said they enjoyed the movie, you've done nothing but cry. I know. going on twelve he minutes. He says he, he, I'd he go would back go and back see it again. See, I go. would go back and see it again. It's like the third I'm time. I'm not. Telling, I'm, I'm not telling you right now to all three of our listeners. <laughs> shut I, up. That is the first thing I'm thinking. But second, you are never, ever, ever invited to see one of my favorites with me again. <laughs> You, you know how to take all the wind out of a movie. I, I went to this restaurant and now, I ate this food that tasted like crap. Gave me the crap. and uh, But I go back and eat it again. Because it was delicious. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, geez, she made me lose my train of thought. No, no, again. You that, haven't that, had a train that, of thought. That, you, yeah. I mean, fine. I know where the <laughs> that, three guys that, that, That's my opinion. It's just being, wow. Yeah. You're, um, you're done. So what was your take on the movie, Phil? I enjoyed it. I thought it was a good movie. I liked the fact that he finally killed someone. And um, How did he kill him? Snapped his neck. And he cried afterwards like he, a little girl. He cried? Because he's not supposed to be killing oh, people. That, that, that's some BS right there, man. That's what would upset me, seeing Superman cry, not killing somebody. You know what? It's, it's, the, here's the other thing. I know that there was, there was a few. It, 95% of the movie was all violence from the very beginning to the very end non-stop and it all a lot of it seemed to be like the same fight over and over and over again there was a handful of emotional scenes that i think were were fitted to the movie very properly but even those were so small compared to everything else there, there's a part in the movie where his father dies and you can just see everybody in the theater crying but it was like a two minute bit you can see any, everybody in the theater yeah, dying. I, I t- crying, I crying, mean, crying. Yes, I turned around and I saw everybody crying in the theater. <laughs> <laughs> I think you were the only one crying in the theater. Were you crying, Phil? No. Ah, hmm. uh, all right, fine. I'm done. You sure? No, but no, but uh, I, I can't argue with you because you shut down and the other guy didn't see the movie. Because I can't argue with you. Like I said, I enjoyed it. I thought the movie was fine. I mean, again, I, the only agreement you'll get was the fight scenes were a little long, but that's the trend today. Whether it's G.I. Joe, the Transformers, all of those fight scenes, they go out of their way to blow stuff up, knock buildings down. They had a black hole in the movie, Phil. How many people died because of that? How many people died because of your black hole? <laughs> we'll talk about that when we come back. You listen to a Three Guys Rant on, a, on the Rant Radio Network. Transmitiendo en vivo en Los Angeles y alrededor del mundo. Would you like to comment? Get on the radio. Check out our website at www.thetreeguysrant.com. The Three Guys Rant. 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 This is Becca Bateau. When I'm not reading Fifty Shades of Grey and driving men crazy, I spend my time dreaming about the three guys rant. Arvin, Mike, and Phil. (laughs) Yeah, right. We're the Brothers Bear Podcast Live, and I'm your host, Sanch, and I'm always joined by... Edgar. Carlos Medrano. And this is a show where we talk about... Comics? Movies? TV? Video games? Stand-up? Music and many more geeky things. Catch us live on Rant Radio Network on Mondays from 7:30 to 8:30 p.m. That's another commercial in the back. You're listening to What Honesty Feels Like with Christine Sawicki that airs every Tuesday from 8 to 9 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. You can catch us on rantradionetwork.com. If you're one of the most successful people in the world, I want to talk to you. I want to know how you got there, where you're going, and who you're giving back to. So call me at 855-969-7268 and check in with me, the most successful people in the world. 
Dirty Truth Radio Show, where we'll be talking about relationships, marriage, how to have sex, dating, first dating, what not to do while dating, why middle-aged women are very easy, don't talk about sex on a first date, why shouldn't you, don't say X about on a first date, why religion should never be mentioned, <laughs> <laughs> and be masculine, <laughs> and be masculine men, <laughs> alpha males, and alpha males, why women love alpha males but won't, but Girl, won't admit it, yes we do, on Tuesdays from 6.30 to 7.30 p.m. Only on Rant Radio no Network. What, what up, foodie freaks? It's Chef Bev Lazo with the Culinary Trend Show. Join me and my brigade every Thursday night from 8 to 9 p.m., where we will be cooking up some crazy stuff that will give you the appetite for discussion. It's all about the good food, good friends, and good times. Only here on RantRadioNetwork.com. What's up everyone, Sports Guru here. Sick of looking at the same old boring websites? Well check out the new sportsguru.com for all the hottest training videos and all the biggest sports news. Become a VIP for only $4.99 and get premium access to everything the Sports Guru has to offer. The beautiful Gurus Girls, all my biggest sports picks, and much more. So get off that porn site and check out the new sportsguru.com. Hi, I'm Aaron Michael Sanchez. And I'm Kelly V. Dolan. And we are excited to announce our show live with Aaron and Kelly is on Rant Radio Network. What do we talk about on our show, Kelly? We talk about everything from entertainment to business and tech, and we have a few laughs in between. <laughs> That's right. Go check us out on RantRadioNetwork.com. That's RantRadioNetwork.com. Check it out. Streaming live from Los Angeles, the Three Guys Rant with Arvin, Mike, and Phil. Check out our website at www.thetreeguysrant.com. The Three Guys Rant starts now. Y ya regresamos. Gracias por estar en sintonía. Sintonía? Sintonía. I don't even know what the hell that means. That means you're being tuned, being uh, listened. When you're listening, when you tune into something, estás en sintonía. <laughs> I swear you make stuff up as you go. No, I don't. If you if you spoke a uh, foreign language like I do, man, an exotic language. You mean English? It'd be great. Hi. <laughs> so, uh, Phil doesn't want to talk today, man. Yeah, I don't know what's wrong with Phil. You know what I want to uh, talk to you guys about? What about um, the George Zimmerman trial? Finally started. How long was it since he killed that ki that kid? Probably a year, year and, and a half, half, something like that, right? So jury selection started this week. Um, do you guys think he can find a fair? Nope. <laughs> they waited. They waited too long. So we, we we should mention that, and I don't want to I don't want to say it wrong. Russia Joel. Goel. 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 Goel, but with a G. Okay, is in studio with us. Um, why don't you introduce yourself? Because I know he would ask me, and, and I the easiest way for me would be as a host. Okay, yes. Is That's a fair assessment? I am a television host and an international correspondent, so I okay. cover a lot of entertainment. And I am a Bollywood step company dance owner, so I do a lot of productions, and I teach Bollywood dancing. Oh, awesome. Yep. So, so you agree with me that Superman could have been done a little <laughs> bit better. I was going to talk to you about that. I actually saw your um, posting. So you didn't like it? No, no, no. That's what she took from your posting. What did, what did you think? Okay. I liked Superman. Um, I, I covered the junket of it, and um, I thought it was very interesting. I liked the fact that we saw pre-Superman versus where we left off with Christopher Reeve and we saw Brandon Roth. For me, a couple of the stunt scenes, um, I think they were too long. Those could have been cut. I think there were pieces where the film actually dragged. And if those pieces had been shortened a little bit, it would have moved faster. But I enjoyed I, I it. Swear I'm a huge Superman I fan. swear that sounds just like what I said 15 minutes ago. No, no, really? No. She started with, I liked the movie. I said I liked the movie. I just didn't feel like it was a but Superman you, movie. But, but then you spent 12 minutes bashing it. No. She's Why didn't you like it? I, I didn't think it was necessarily a Superman movie. I think it was more the whole other side of it, the kryptonite side, the aliens. And given, I understand Superman is an alien, but it seems like most of the movie was concentrated on that. Um, I don't necessarily, I, I guess Phil's right. In today's uh, time, I, I just don't necessarily agree that Superman should have killed him at the end of the movie. 
Hmm. I actually like that part. <laughs> See, <laughs> that's what I tried to tell her. Did I said, you guys like it? I loved it. You loved and, it. Okay. I said because to me in 2013, things have evolved. Right. It's unfortunate, but the next thing that's going to be coming out is Bugs Bunny. This time when he shoots Summerfoot, Summerfoot's actually dead. <laughs> but I'm just saying. Oh as yeah, a pro- let, let's let's end, let's end oh it, the series like that. that. I'm just funny. saying though, as a progression of where things have gone, you look at what Transformers started out with. Right. You look at where you know. Again, I thought the last Dark Knight sucked, and I wanted to kill myself for sitting through it. And I right. wanted the producer to die for making the movie. But they said, you know, Mike's son said it was the greatest movie ever made because he liked Batman. The last one. Yeah, yeah. I wasn't too I'm a big Superman fan. Yeah, I wasn't fan. a fan of the whole thing. So yeah. Neither was I. I thought, but it's just, it's the whole darker side of things. And, and, and part of where I was making fun of Arvin earlier, I said, this isn't Mayberry anymore. I don't right. think people want to see Superman helping an old lady across the street, sitting there with no, the glasses. we've seen too much of that that's already, the right? Problem. It's so, like, where would we go from there? Right. right. So that's what I was trying to tell Arvin. So Arvin goes in, and that's why I said, what are you, 93? You're upset about... So in Because what I said is that no recent say? Superman hero, or yeah, no recent hero movie that's come out, Batman, Iron Man, Iron Man may be a little bit on the fence, but I don't think any of those movies are geared towards children anymore. They're, they're definitely, definitely an adult superhero movie. Yeah, right. but the children, I tell him, my nephew, for example, he's a you know eight-year-old video game freak. Did he see this movie? No. Okay. He didn't because... It won't be in his top 10. The only reason he enjoyed Transformers was because he got to play with the toys. But Superman, Batman, Spider-Man, those don't appeal to a lot of today's kids mm-hmm. to a certain point. They might want to dress like him in the 4 to 8 year old, but I think the 8 to 16 year old, they're too busy playing Halo, Black totally Ops. Totally agree, actually. So I, and I keep trying to tell Arvin, he's like, oh, but it's not for kids. I'm like, no kidding. They want us. We're the suckers who grew up with him. Right. We want we're to see the, the darker fans. side of him. We're all angrier. We're bitter. We're more jaded now. We want our superheroes yeah. to be as angry as we are. So true. You know? No, I agree okay, with you on that. Okay, but he cried after the fact that he killed him. Okay, so he showed a little remorse. But we so, had, that was a sensitive side of Superman. I think that you. was kind of nice because it was heartwarming. It was a little well, heartfelt. You see the that, softer that side That would have pissed me off. Not the fact that but he killed somebody. You see, and then the other, him cry. The, the, other, the other thing that I said is, is from literally start to finish, mm-hmm. It was nonstop fight, 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 fight. And it almost seemed like it was kind of the same thing over and over. And the emotional moments that they had that I think fit the movie very well, I think were extremely short. Like when he lost his dad, it was like a two-minute thing, and that was that. But see, when I he kills, when, that. When he kills the I, guy. Yeah, but I appreciated all of this stuff because one of the things, and I was funny, I was reading online one of the blogs that said the greatest moments in the movie were the fact that they were 30 seconds long. I know he landed on a spaceship. I know they found him in the field. I know mom and dad loved him. Yay. Okay. We know what the S stood for. I, we've seen it 27 it doesn't, it times. It doesn't stand for S. <laughs> we know that for well, sure. Well, yeah, now we know that for sure. But what I'm saying oh. is we've seen all the backstory 27 times. Right. I, I'm glad we just we glazed over that. Let's get down to it. I'm with you on that one. So, I, don't want, I, I don't want to see the whole crying scene with dad for too long. Okay, yes, it's sad he lost his father. I didn't want that to be elongated. Um, but like I mentioned before, some of the fight sequences, yeah, I thought they were just, it was just too long, right. some of them. Those could have been shortened or there could have been more. After right. a while, it just seemed redundant to me. It was like, I felt like I was seeing the same stunts and I could just start it, punching it, like It was computer. one guy flying into the other guy and the other guy flying back into the other guy. So. But, you know, I got to tell you, as a woman, Henry Cavill, hot, hot, hot. Funny, I mean, that's what the last caller said after they called to say you were a really? moron. Yeah. Hey, yeah. First she, off, she, 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 she didn't say that. Comment. I was driving, so I missed it. Sorry. And they <laughs> called in. And, well, I, I heard. I'm sorry. Did you hear me? She, yep. Uh, I didn't hear her say she's a moron. Oh, uh, you know, we'll, we'll do the That was the back. first sentence. Yeah. Yeah. As okay. we read between the lines, it says Arvin's a moron, and she said that Cavill was hot, and he filled out the suit nicely, and she was happy with the movie. Yeah, I think he did, too. So she says you're a bad reviewer. And our special guest is saying the same thing. No, I didn't say it's a bad review. No, no, it's okay. You can. You can. We can. Yeah, she's international, so she's fact, got more credibility, so you suck. As a matter of fact, can you just slap him with that bottle? <laughs> <laughs> whoa, whoa, whoa. That's the whole Superman thing going on there. So, um, yeah. So, are, are you through bashing the movie now? I said I'd see it again. I yeah, never said it was a bad movie. We don't, not with you us, can't watch huh? with us. Huh? Maybe you can reevaluate it and come back to us with your we don't uh, do second secondary thoughts, for right? Oh, no. No, not for That's it. No, okay. That's it. I said it was a good movie. I'd say I'd see it again. <laughs> I just said it was it was different. It wasn't what I anticipated. That's it. You know, in Arvin's defense, though, I have to say I have been reading a couple of blogs. And I've people. some people have been disappointed with Superman, too. Um, so you're not the only one. I mean, there's quite a few Again, I loved it, but Don't there's still it. quite a few. I, I'm not saying it was. I'm disappointed. <laughs> I'm just saying it was different than what I expected. That's it. See, but I think that's part of today's movie-going problems. 
it's kind of, you know, if you go in expecting something and what they've done to so many movies. It's think- Superman. It's the best <laughs> superhero out there. Here's Batman. Here's Iron Man. Here's Superman. They needed to exceed this platform here. Only to you. No. Because it's Superman. $131 million dollars say. Um, 101, <laughs> 30? 131 million. Wow. That's horrible. Horrible Open compared weekends. to Avengers and everything else that's come out. Okay, be that as it may, they've already got two and three locked up. So they're going to make them. Wow. Tell me this, Arvin. What do you think of the Superman suit? Because, you know, they made some changes compared to, like, the red underwear is gone. What do you think of that whole thing? That's what was off. I'm like, I couldn't pimp out uh, what it was. Out. <laughs> you know that? That surprises me. You have me the audacity you, No, because you know what? Something was throwing me off. You know nothing about it. There was me no off, red underwear. And then there was no S on the cape. I'm like, there's an S missing on the cape. That I yes. did notice. So you're you know what's amazing? That, that you didn't notice that considering that you're always looking at men's crotches. <laughs> Ouch. Oh, that's a whole nother topic. <laughs> that's a whole nother show for Arvin. <laughs> no, I, I thought it was fine. I thought I know that there was a lot of remarks and they looked a little scaly and it looked like a lizard and blah, blah, blah. I had no issue with it whatsoever. Okay. I thought it was good. So you're down with the suit? I'm down with the suit. All right. So the I, suit I, is all blue or what? If, if it's all stretchy, I would try to get in the suit. <laughs> no, it's more of a metallic finish. It's metallic. Okay. Blue and red. It's got a little yeah. bit of red in it with the big... So what they do, S- again, it was just... It's a modern take. I I, I mean, they, they really did... Um, you know, in, in almost every series, like, you know, the whole thing with the dad and the older truck and they find him after the crash, they really just did away with all of that. Yeah. They kind of just said, look, you know, they found him. Uh, we loved you. We tried to raise you right. Now, let the me whole ask thing with Jarrell. Let me ask you this. I know that there was quite a bit back and forth within the movie. They, they'd be in today, and then they'd go back, and then they'd be today, and then they'd go back. Do you have an issue with that? Did you think that fit? No, I, I thought it was. Per- I, I I liked it because it shortened the sequences. I really didn't want to watch four more Supermans before he finds his fortress over in the. Um, so in you, the would, you wouldn't have rather seen all the stuff from no. before. So no. you liked the way they did it. I really did. I liked the fact that we got down to it. This is Superman. Where are we going with it? And I like the fact that he could go back and forth and kind of connect with his dad, Russell Crowe. Yes. Like, that was kind of neat to me because I didn't expect that at all in the film. Well, and I was wondering how they were going to do the whole fortress because in the Christopher Reeves series for so long, he had it over in Iceland somewhere hidden. Yes. And I kept saying, you know, they're going to have to change it. Uh, I like the way they kind of kept with the, the ideology of, okay, there's an ice field. We're going to work around that. But... You know, I, I think it was a modern twist on that. I'm happy with it. I, I think the re- I was concerned about it being a reboot again. That was my thought. What about Amy Adams? Did, you, did she work for you I guys? I loved her. Because I thought she was adorable. I'm Who was she? Fe- I'm on the fence about her. She, she Lois played Lane. Lois Lane. Oh, okay, Lois Lane. Okay. I like the fact, though, that... The love the- interest. She gets to kiss Henry. <laughs> <laughs> I, like the way she said. I like the fact that out of the gate, there was no weak side to her. She wasn't doing the whole, I am woman, hear me roar. It was more of, look, I'm going to do a story. You know why I'm here. Let's get down to it. And they still gave her a feminine side. Yeah. Because um, I thought the, some, some of the Margot Kidder stuff in the old days seemed to be a little bit too... Harsh? Too feminist. Well, what I liked, too, is as a journalist, um, they showed her softer side. Yeah. So it showed that we always don't have to be aggressive and mean and always looking for the dish. I mean, the dirt, you know, on somebody and really willing to attack. She kind of took back and understood his emotions and then kind of relayed, you know, went with him on that and didn't want to bash him when she understood where he came from, so... Yeah, and I thought I like that was that. great also. They didn't get into the whole, what are you? There was no, you're an alien. We didn't drag all of that part of it out. It was like, okay, you're different. You're cool. Hey, let's get on with it. Yep. So, Agreed. And I know that bothered Arvin because. Well, maybe we can connect Arvin to Zack Snyder, and if there's a sequel, he could give his two cents. Yeah, I'm all for that. <laughs> who, was, who was the villain? I forget his name, but he's the, uh, well, it was Zod. Oh, it okay. was Zod, yes. It was Zod. Zod. I also like the fact they didn't go through the whole drawn out process of the president and kneel before Zod and let's just get down to it. They gotta have it out. Cut it short. One needed to die. I know you liked the character. Did you like the actor as Zod? I did. I I thought he did a. uh, I I mean I can't imagine who else I would picture in that role. Um, I thought he did a pretty good job. You know he relayed. As the guy from Boardwalk Empire, I thought he was spectacular. That's all I kept seeing. I'm I'm on the fence about him too. Well, you listen to the Three Guys Rant on the Rat Radio Network with special in studio guest Rasha Goel. Goel, we'll be right back and we'll talk to her now. Call the Three Guys Rant now. Would you like to comment? Get on the radio. Check out our website at www.thetreeguysrant.com. The three guys rant, rant, rant. Rant. 
you have entered the Twilight Zone. Uh, just kidding. It's only Rat Radio Network. You watching the game at home? Why? Come watch it at Mambo Grill, the hottest spot in Downey. You'll have good food, drinks, and a great time at a low price. We have the coldest beer in our sports bar, where you can enjoy the game on any of our huge flat screen TVs. And when your home team wins, you get 25% off anything in Mambo Grill. We're on Downey Avenue, one block north of Firestone, or visit us on the web. Mambo Grill, love at first bite. The Amnark Radio Show is now airing on the Rant Radio Network. You've heard the three guys Rant refer to us as the Clam Chowder Power Hour. Now we get to bring our New England humor over to Los Angeles. We'll be airing Friday at 2 p.m. Pacific, 5 Eastern, and we'll cover everything from local to national politics and news. Guess what? We're uncensored, too. I'm Dave. Join me and Nick Friday on the Rant Radio Network. TicketSurgeon.com reaches at 855-WIN-4199. Did you get caught speeding, texting while driving, or doing anything else you weren't supposed to do? Give us a call. Don't miss work. Don't lose out on the money. Don't get any more points. What about your insurance? Let us fight for you. The TicketSurgeon.com at 855-WIN-4199. Dirty Truth Radio Show, where we'll be talking about relationships, marriage, how to have sex, Dating. First dating. What not to do while dating. Why middle-aged women are very easy. Don't talk about sex on the first day. Why shouldn't you? Don't say X about it on the first day. Why religion should never be mentioned. <laughs> <laughs> and demasculating. <laughs> and demasculating men. <laughs> alpha males. And alpha males. Why women love alpha males but won't, but Girl, won't admit it. Yes, we do. On Tuesdays from 6.30 to 7.30 p.m. Only on RantRadioNetwork.com. No What's up, everyone? Sports Guru here. Sick of looking at the same old boring websites? Well, check out the new SportsGuru.com for all the hottest training videos and all the biggest sports news. Become a VIP for only $4.99 and get premium access to everything the Sports Guru has to offer. The beautiful Gurus Girls, all my biggest sports picks, and much more. So get off that porn site and check out the new SportsGuru.com. Experts know that for pastry, Baker's Bodega has it all. Exclusive brands like West Co. Bank Mart, Satin Ice, and Pastry Pride. One-on-one -on -one day seminars for cake decorating and gelatin art. So for our service, wide range of ingredients and supplies, and for the low prices, Baker's Bodega has it all. But you don't need to be an expert. Baker's Bodega, 7869 Paramount Boulevard in Pico Rivera. Come, we're waiting for you. Wow. Y'all listening to Rat Radio Network, unpredictably and a tiny wow. This is Becca Bateau. When I'm not reading Fifty Shades of Grey and driving men crazy, I spend my time dreaming about the three guys rant, Arvin, Mike, and Phil. <laughs> yeah, right. Streaming live from Los Angeles and worldwide, the three guys rant with Arvin, Mike, and Phil. Check out our website at www.thetreeguysrant.com. The Three Guys Friends starts now. All right, we're back from the break. We've got special in-studio guest, Rasha Goel. Hello, hello. And but before that, we have breaking news. We're getting a star on the Hollywood Walk of Fame. That's right. No, we're not. Because <laughs> I'm not paying $30,000 to have Go online and sign the petition. Yeah, that's what you want to I'll do. I'll be your first signer, guys. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> so if I read here correctly, you started in school to be a pharmacy major. Yes. Can you believe that? So you wanted to be a drug dealer, I see. I did. Well, I, I can believe it only, <laughs> Under the table. only from the perspective of, the you know, did your parents push you in that direction? Because I'm Indian and I'm brown. <laughs> really? I thought you were Mexican. Damn, what? I thought it was a good one. <laughs> I thought we were, I thought we're about to get one we could clean this productive uh, uh, in society. I, I was going to say, her bio said, typical to a South Asian household. Yes. That's why I figured, you know, mom and dad are prodding. And she the medical field. You're absolutely right. Actually, um... That's something that had been kind of installed in my head for so long that you either need to become a pharmacist or a doctor. So um, I applied to, as a bio major and um, I was studying pharmacy and I was in my second year and I still remember this. I actually was sitting in a zoology class studying some 
invertebrates and vertebrates. I'm like, oh my God, this is so boring. And I literally, in the middle of the class, closed the book, walked out of the class, and went straight to the counselor. I'm like, you need to change my major. This is not happening. I am a um, communicator. I love talking. I love, um, you know, meeting people, conversing. I need to get into the communication studies program. One question, though. Isn't that the same thing all women say at some point? I'm a talker. No. Okay, so should I say I'm smart, witty, and charming, and I had to come into this field? <laughs> how, how, how many years? How many years into it were you? Into school? Yeah. Two years. Okay. Two, but you know, I never enjoyed it, and I think that's a lot of things that um, that that's something that I think a lot of young kids may be able to relate to because they get they get forced into this field, and you just keep doing it, thinking it's the right thing, mm. and I think it just got to me that wait, this is not what I want to do. Because I even tried interning at a pharmacy. I quit after the first day. <laughs> I just bad, can't huh? do it. I just couldn't shove pills in a bottle. I just, it wasn't my thing. Wow. Now, I, when you go from pharmacy to acting or the entertainment business, I, I'm more curious about, I, I understand the transition as a whole. How was it at home, though? How do you convince your family that you're not making a mistake and throwing your life away? You know, Initially, it's tough. Um, my mother was very, very supportive. She she always knew because even growing up, all my science projects were video simulations. Rasha Goel reporting from the Martin Luther King, blah, blah, blah. You know, like everything was a, a video for me. Um, my dad had a difficult time. You know, he's, he's an engineer, and it, it was always his dream to see both of his kids go into medicine. I have a brother. He didn't go in that way, in that direction either. And so I think it was hard convincing him because for him, he's like, what are you going to do as an entertainer? You want to live on the streets? You're not going to have a good salary. <laughs> You're not going to have, you know, who's going to, the, the best thing was, who's going to marry you? You're not going to have a career. So things like that. And I think for him it was disappointing. But, you know, as time started going and evolving, I think he got used to the fact that he wasn't going to be able to change my mind. And um, I think he accepted it. And it's still, I think even till this day, um, it's funny. I, I was nominated for an Emmy three years ago as a producer. And even at that time, I'm like, hey, I got nominated for an Emmy. I was the only South Asian woman there. And he's like, oh, okay, that's great. <laughs> you know, and I'm like. What's an Emmy? He just, yeah, <laughs> you know, I just, I think it's just one of those things, especially being South Asian, because it's so ingrained. It's like medical, law, engineering. And even now, as an owner of a dance company, we have so many kids who just come through. And the South Asian kids, the parents are always saying it. Hey, my kids are doing dance for fun. Don't stress them out with this. You know, they have they they have other careers, and it's so I'm like, wow, it's just it just keeps trickling down generation to generation. It's really interesting. And I was I was gonna that was my next question is that how do you see the generational differences um, from ten or twelve years ago? How long ago did you start doing the media? I'm sorry, before I long time ago. <laughs> we'll go with uh, <laughs> ten plus years ago, and, and you know, and to where it is now. But I guess you, you covered that that the the, the the it's inbred. Yes. I, I think it's it's very ingrained in society, and that's one of the things that, to your point, the South Asian communities are very, very strict about that. Yes, yes. I think the minute you're in high school, it's automatic, like, well, what do you want to be? You want to be a neurosurgeon? Do you want to be a pharmacist? Do you want to be a lawyer? I mean, it's not, the artist world is not even considered. And it's really funny because a couple of days ago, I was on Twitter, and I read this article um, I'm blanking out on what publication it was in, but it was really interesting. The journalists covered. It's so neat to see over the past three years how South Asian actors are dominating in like every major sitcom. I mean, you've got Cal Penn who's made a difference. You've got um, Kunal Nair, Big Bang Theory, such a mm -hmm. top-rated show. Right. You know, you've got Parvez Chima. All these different South Asian actors are evolving. So you've got a few of them that have migrated outside of it, but overall still... The parents, when you go somewhere, it's still more, oh, well, what field are you in? Entertainment? Oh, oh that's good. That's good. But it's never, uh, oh, you, you know, you should pursue that industry. So I think the, the kids are still very geared and focused because those are careers that are considered stable. But now, even as big as Bollywood is. You think? I, I would think, I, I, yeah, that's why I was, you know, I, I, one of the questions I have had is because I know we've watched a lot of the shows. My, my wife loves a lot of that uh, Bollywood, and that's I wanna, we'll talk about dancing in the next segment. But I've always been fascinated how to this day and age, there's still no kissing. They, 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 they <laughs> no, up, there is. Oh, did they find it? Because I know the yes, last... Yes, they are kissing. We they saw are it. making out. But, okay. Uh, I'm <laughs> sorry, I have, I have a question, and hopefully... Full, uh, Oh, well, look how Arvin tunes in right now when we right. when we mentioned that part. No, no, no. <laughs> I had a question, but I was listening. I just didn't want to be rude. 
and I've seen it over That's and over again. <laughs> what exactly is Bollywood? Okay, so Bollywood actually, well, the official name of the industry is the Mumbai film industry. But because it is one of the largest film industries in the mm. world, it's mm. based in Bombay. They kind of integrated just the word Hollywood and changed it to Bollywood with a B. But okay. um, most of the actors like the industry to be referred as as the Mumbai film industry. But because Bollywood has just become such a catchy phrase, right. that's what they refer the Indian film industry as. And okay. so the Bollywood songs and the Bollywood dancing now, it's because you're watching Indian Bollywood movies. It's just easier to say, oh, I'm learning Bollywood. Now, and I don't mean for it to sound like a stupid question, but is it always like a dance movie? I don't, I don't know if you noticed, but no the TV behind you question. is this Aha! is actually this is what's streaming out. This is what everybody's okay. seeing right now. So let me tell you, this guy is Salman. Well, the previous one was Salman Khan. This guy here, he is one of the biggest box office grocers in India. This guy could have a film that the story is horrendous, and you're just like, what is going on? But he is the biggest box office grocer, hugest fan following. Um, to answer your question, people in India love song and dance. I'm not sure if you're familiar with Indian weddings. Oh, it's yeah. a five-day affair for us. That's a small one, isn't it? it? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> and the biggest night we have is called a Sangeet, which is the Indian dance party. So with these Indian movies, what happens is that the whole reason you go watch a Bollywood film is you want to leave all the stresses and tensions of your day behind, and you want entertainment. And through song and dance that's where you can get that. So if when you ask me, are, are songs and dance related to Bollywood movies? Yes, that's what people go. See, in fact, before a movie is even released in India, the songs are released. And that's what even helps determine if it's going to be a blockbuster or not. Why don't we do that here? Because half the stuff that we put out sucks. <laughs> and it's funny because I, I can you imagine I was, Superman like doing a little dance? Yeah, there's like no dancing. Right. Well, that guy looked a little Superman esque. Well, he looked like because an Indian Superman. The, the last documentary that I saw was talking about how right before people would kiss, they'd bounce into each other, they'd spin around and break into dance. Yes. So that for the longest time, it was taboo to have kissing in Wait a minute, that in Indian movies. An awful lot like what Mikey and his boyfriend did. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh, do share. <laughs> yeah, uh, we'll, we'll talk about that in the next second. So th that's changed, I take it. It's definitely evolved. Um, I think if you were looking at films 10 years ago, they like to make it family friendly. And see, the thing again is, PDA is not really encouraged in the Indian culture. So I, by showing that on the big screen, it's almost like they'd be promoting that with the young people. It's, just, oh. it's still a very conservative culture. But now over the years, they've become what they call more westernized. So now you will, you, you'll rarely see a full-on sex scene within Indian movies. It, it's very rare. You'll see that. Um, but you will see like different scenes that may kind of hint at that, or you'll see some kissing happening. But that's as sexual as it's going to get. And is that a, a recent change? Yeah, I would say the past five to six years. Okay, so the, yeah, recent. it's been a while since I've seen the documentary. That, oh, okay. they, they, it was, they talked about Bollywood, and you know, because that was one of the questions. Why was there no, and they went through the whole, uh, you know, like you said, that people were trying to keep it. Um, I guess they felt that, that kissing would lead to promiscuity. Yes. And they didn't want to promote that. And in a country that already has a billion people, they don't and need a lot of other issues, they don't need to encourage oh, that. I was going to say, I, I think they know then. <laughs> I'm going to say I think they, well you know the other thing that I saw about a year ago um, and, and Bollywood had always been at least in my opinion from what we see here in mainstream media very reserved but watching them attack Ashwira Rai after her pregnancy wow that was some f I mean th I, thought, I thought we'd make fun of Kim Kardashian in this country but the, the Indian people went after Ashwira something fierce. Oh, it's been horrible, actually. And you know what's interesting is that the media was not like that before. I think in recent years, because of the growth of channels and media there that's become more vocal, they have become harsh. And you're absolutely right. And I think... The, the tricky part with Ashwarya is she's such an international icon, and people have a lot of expectations from her. So you, Bollywood's a huge industry, but there's very few people or very few actors that are really recognized as, um, that are known out here. Like if I were to give you the, the name Shah Rukh Khan or Priyanka Chopra, you may not know that. But if I say Frida Pinto, Ashwarya Rai, you'll know those names, or you'll Mikey, know who they are. Mikey, do you know are. who they are? Yep. Because I know, you said Oprah, Frida? Oprah and Chaka Khan, right? <laughs> Yeah, she, you got it. Okay. She plays the drum and. <laughs> but yes, and the they other have one's become black. <laughs> good observation. Wow. But people have become more vocal. Yeah, and I, that just—it was surprising to me. 
because yes. uh, I didn't realize how I remember. But why? why I, don't, I don't follow Bollywood, but why were they attacking her? She recently became a mother okay. and um, she gained a lot of weight, like, you know, baby fat. And so I think, and she was, she's beautiful. She was, she's been recognized as one of the most beautiful women in the world. So I think for them, it was just like, okay, here you are an international icon, you represent India. And it's like, you need to lose that baby fat. So they, they were kind of rushing her because she was just very uh, carefree. I, about I, I'm it. just questioning how, what kind of time frame are we talking about? Because I know my Latina sisters, <laughs> when they're so big and they're like, it's baby fat, like, oh, really? How, how old is your baby? Seven, eight years? So, I mean, <laughs> are we talking about that kind of baby fat? No, I think her baby was about four to five months, if I'm not mistaken. Oh, I'm sure she's okay then. Yes. Well, I mean, so, yeah, she, so the baby had no baby fat. She had the baby she fat. Had the baby she fat. had the baby fat. In fact, I recently just um, interviewed her about a month ago, and I personally thought she, she looked stunning. But even at that red carpet event, a lot of people were commenting on her saying, oh, she's still got a little bit of the, the chubs on her. <laughs> Those Definitely. are called love handles. And if you see her, and if they're calling her a little bit of the chubs, what are they saying about us? You're listening to the Three Guys Rant on the Rap Video Network. They're saying Stampede is coming. Special in studio guest, Rasha Goel. We'll be right back after the break. The Three Guys Rant. To watch our stupidity live, head over to ratradionetwork.com. Good <laughs> colors and things. Looking for a delicious, fresh family meal that's ready when you are and easy on your budget? Welcome to Piara Pizza. We make our pizzas with handmade dough, 100% real cheese, and tomato sauce blended with our own spices. Nothing is ever frozen. We always have large pepperoni and cheese pizzas fresh and waiting for you for only $5. Or choose one of our specialty pizzas. We have veggie, meat lovers, supreme, and Hawaiian. Add an order of our amazing hot wings, cheesy bread, or breadsticks. Our locations are ultra modern, ultra clean, and open seven days a week. Visit any one of our locations today. Or check us out on the web at www.piarapizza.com. Piara Pizza. Fresh, Hot and ready for you when you come in. Stop in for your Piara Pizza today. What up, foodie freaks? It's Chef Bev Lazo with the Culinary Trend Show. Join me and my brigade every Thursday night from 8 to 9 p.m. where we will be cooking up some crazy stuff that will give you the appetite for discussion. It's all about the good food, good friends, and good times. Only here on RantRadioNetwork.com. Hi, I'm Aaron Michael Sanchez. And I'm Kelly V. Dolan. And we are excited to announce our show live with Aaron and Kelly is on Rant Radio Network. What do we talk about on our show, Kelly? We talk about everything from entertainment to business and tech. And we have a few laughs in between. <laughs> That's right. Go check us out on RantRadioNetwork.com. That's RantRadioNetwork.com. Check it out. 30 Truth Radio Show, where we'll be talking about relationships. Marriage. How to have sex. Dating. First dating. What not to do while dating. Why middle-aged women are very easy. Don't talk about sex on the first day. Why shouldn't you? Don't say X about on the first day. Why religion should never be mentioned. <laughs> <laughs> and be masculine. And be masculine then. <laughs> alpha males. And alpha males. Why women love alpha males but won't, but Girl, won't admit you know it. Yes, we do. On Tuesdays from 6.30 to 7.30 p.m. Only on RantRadioNetwork.com. No What's up everyone, Sports Guru here. Sick of looking at the same old boring websites? Well check out thenewsportsguru.com for all the hottest training videos and all the biggest sports news. Become a VIP for only $4.99 and get premium access to everything the Sports Guru has to offer. The beautiful Gurus Girls, all my biggest sports picks, and much more. So get off that porn site and check out thenewsportsguru.com. Wow! Y'all listening to Rant Radio Network, unpredictably and a tiny wow. This is Becca Bateau. When I'm not reading Fifty Shades of Grey and driving men crazy, I spend my time dreaming about the three guys rant, Arvin, Mike, and Phil. <laughs> 
Yeah, right. Streaming live from Los Angeles and worldwide, The Three Guys Rant with Arvin, Mike, and Phil. Check out our website at www.thetreeguysrant.com. The Three Guys Rant starts now. All right, we're back. And for those of you streaming, you're watching Arvin run in. He's handing us notes that apparently we didn't have or um, I guess we do have. And I just got a text. I'm supposed to ask you about your book. About our book, The Smile and Breathe. I don't know. They didn't tell me that part of it. Well, how many <laughs> books have you written, woman? <laughs> and that's in the work. So it's um, it's called Smile and Breathe, and it's actually a cancer publication. Okay. And it's dedicated. It's a coffee table book that is dedicated to people who have battled cancer um, or who are currently battling. Cancer is in my family, and I've seen a lot of people affected by it. And I just thought it'd really be nice to honor them in a nice fun way so it's it, it's a book that really showcases it, it's not meant to sit and educate and just you know go into the nitty-gritty of cancer it's more to celebrate people in their lives so it's fun pictures um, with whatever families want to submit or turn in or just showcase about the things that they've gone through oh nice and, and I, I guess the hardest part along those lines is that it, it's difficult to put a smile with a topic it is like that it is it's a very emotional topic. I think it's a very tough topic for people to talk about. And so the whole, you know, the title of smile and breathe, it's like, take a moment to just smile and enjoy what you have around you. And by looking at this book, we want to be able to provide comfort and enjoyment to others and let them know that, you know, you're not the only one out there. Sometimes when you're battling cancer, you feel alone and you feel like people don't understand you. And some people even feel shunned by family and friends. So we want everybody to know that this happens to everybody, and it's unfortunate that nowadays, I mean, my God, every second person you turn to is diagnosed with cancer. Or some yeah. form there. Yeah, and it's, you know what, it can happen to anybody at any age. I just found out somebody, I met someone the other day diagnosed with lung cancer at 17. Wow. Didn't smoke. Wow. 17. That's pretty insane. What? Go ahead, Smartass. Where's your comment? I, I, have no I was waiting for something. I'm so like looking that, at him saying, bring it on. <laughs> <laughs> cancer is serious. I told you how I think I'm going to die. I think I'm going to die of colon cancer. Oh. <laughs> you know what? That. I don't so, even want to go there. So you know what I told you? Quitting certain things up there. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, so I, I'm curious. You know, you said it's going to be a coffee table book. Yes. Which is kind of surprising because most people don't have coffee tables anymore. But also, so many, not I wouldn't say people, but I think the younger generation, th- there's, there's a whole dynamic where they've gone away from a book. And, and I, it is funny because as I was listening to what you were saying, I don't think there's any way that you could do the whole, um, uh, what, what is it called again? I'm sorry. Smile, Smile and, breathe. and breathe. Yes. You couldn't do that in a PDF. Well, we were actually, and we are currently still looking into taking that book and um, making it available, you know, on Kindle and different things like that. So we are exploring that because that's a great point you bring up because a lot of people may not want a hard copy of it. Right. So we are definitely exploring the options of making it, available online and on the you, internet do you think it wouldn't be a good fit for that well i'm saying for me i i know as a perspective that is even though we're tech junkies there right. are certain things where you know i've talked when we go on vacation a lot of the stuff that i take is all done by charles schultz whether it's his biography whether it's any of the you know the, the longer snoopy books whether it's all of the print um so when you go on vacation you actually take printed material yes because I can't stand. I mean, if I'm on vacation, I don't want a Kindle. I don't want an iPad. Right. I don't want any of that. that that's what's throwing me off because I, I don't think I've ever physically seen you read a book. Correct. So it's, it's always on a tablet of some <laughs> sort. So your vacation, statement throws me off. So what I'm saying is, I think of something that, you know because we have a few you know members of the family that do have the cancer, and I, I I just I don't know at least in my opinion I couldn't sit there and say oh here look at my iPad you know smile and relax I mean okay so you see a cute puppy picture smile and, and breathe cat, smile and breathe. <laughs> You see a cat <laughs> playing piano. It's better than. But I, 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 I thought you were going to say something, smile, cry later. There's something about a book that I think still holds. Well, the good thing she can do is when she's selling the book, she can also sell coffee tables. That come with it. <laughs> hey, that's a great idea. <laughs> Buy look, the book and look, get a coffee table for free. Look, Kramer, <laughs> coffee book, uh, coffee table. Build, build the. Um, the table will be the si- exact <laughs> size of the book. the book. I like it. A special table. I like right. it. I like that too. You know what? Side put, table. put legs on the book. That Ooh, they can't stand out. That's okay, an Kramer. Idea. Have you been watching Seinfeld right, you're recently? You're going to do my advertising and marketing See? for me. <laughs> it doesn't matter where the idea came from. Yeah, it doesn't matter. It was on Seinfeld <laughs> 10 years ago. <laughs> I don't know what I got to be like that for. Oh, my so, goodness. talk to us about your studio, The Bollywood Dancing. The Bollywood Dancing. Well, the company's name is Bollywood Step Dance, 
and we teach Bollywood dancing. I have a professional dance troupe that's performed on The Tonight Show with Jay Leno, Ellen DeGeneres. Um, we do the Hollywood Bowl, everything. Do you, do you and, need roadies? Do, um, <laughs> you know what? I've been thinking about that. Because I'm volunteering us three Seriously? right here. Seriously? Oh, my God. I'd love to do that. I think I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to consider that. I think it'd be really helpful. And, you know, and what just exactly would you like flare. us to do? Yeah. You could do like some little dancing, like. I'll, I'll, Alan, Alan, put up, Alan, put up the pictures, please. Okay. You know what? I, I, I'm willing to pay to see you in a leotard and a. And Actually, a, Alan, do no, me a favor. No, we don't you, wear okay. leotards. There's Ashwira on the right. Yes. Alan, do me a favor. Oh, both of my idols. By Find the way, me here. a picture. Those women they're, are they're beautiful. The the elephant. The lady that was being garb with the uh, jewels and the whole. So, so that's the woman they were bashing. On the right, yes. Okay. Yeah, the one on the right. Yes. Oh, that one on the right. <laughs> uh, no. Not this one. No. <laughs> so now, you, what, um, Phil? It's going to get us that much closer to our star on Hollywood. Okay, I'm trying to figure out what you want us to do because Alan's going to find us a picture of an Indian sultan's uh, elephant with all of the dress. That's how we we're going to look. We could get we're you the turban. Like, that's us. Okay. No. Speak for yourself. That's like, what I'm, we're going to look like. I'm okay? like a gazelle in the wild. Speak for yourself there. You're like a gazelle I'm, in I've the wild. I've never seen a gazelle that bloated. <laughs> It okay. looks like you just ate a gazelle <laughs> or two. Look, I don't know if we have us. gazelles in India. Okay. I mean. Phil, I'm a peacock. You gotta let me fly, damn it! Peac- Peacocks don't fly, orphan. So, <laughs> they okay. spread their wings. So since Rasha wants to indulge your fantasy, I will do anything to help. I will bring you turbans and rich kurtas that are the shirts that the guys wear on their wedding and just adorn you with ador- um, ornaments. Now, do you realize I, I, when you I, say I, adorn I, us with ornaments? <laughs> Because we're shaped like trees, we're gonna <laughs> I was gonna like, say, a tree. like a walking Christmas tree. Now, now again, I, I, I don't know, and again, I, I, I always emphasize that I don't mean to insult people, but this is, is, it, is it your, 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 what's the word? I don't want to say people because I don't want to stereotype. My people. <laughs> Her is, it, is it your men that wear the, are they called saris? Sarays? What are they called? Are you talking about a Sikh? So the oh, no, 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 no. He's saying the, yeah, the dresses, the, uh, the, 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 the gar, um, the garb, the for, the formal name for a, for a uh, an Indian woman's dress. No, 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 for That's the men. Sorry. Oh, oh, it's for the women. For yes. the women, it's sorry. Oh crap! Oh, you thought it was for the Irvin. men? I was trying to get one. <laughs> I got to get you an Indian dictionary. <laughs> well, <laughs> a lot of a lot of uh, <laughs> Arabs where men wear those. See, I thought it was one of these, so I was trying to get one, but I don't know. It's oh, for that's, women. Okay, no, that's called a Shervani. So you were close. Starts with an S. Good, good, good going. I remember that, it was with an S. That's Sai Khan. She's so one gentle of the on you, giving you credit for the S. <laughs> Get your S's right. That's the Sher- <laughs> Yeah, they're wearing the Shervani. That's the. Is that the Tecate guy in, in India? The, no, he. You know he. Well, he's Ashwarya's husband. Oh, is that who he is? <laughs> You're such a moron. <laughs> well, he's got that look. You know, I don't always drink uh, whatever beer they drink over there, but when I do. What, what kind of beer do you have in India? They have all types of beer. You know, the big. Oh, I think one God. of the Kingfisher. I think is one of them. By the way, I wasn't so, born and brought up there. <laughs> I only go back to visit and work. Okay. <laughs> she, she's a, she's a, she's a Cal- California native, correct? Uh, no, I'm actually. I was born in Hawaii. Oh, really? Yes. Even better. I don't know why you came to Los Angeles. <laughs> do, do you? Can you prove? Can you prove that you were born in Hawaii? I could do the little hula for you. Do you? Okay. That's terribly <laughs> sexy. Because you know, we have. The <laughs> why? Thank you. Because the, the president <laughs> apparently That's people right. think that uh, wasn't born over there. Arvin Barack Obama. So what are you working on now? I mean, I, I know you do a lot of the red carpet events. You do. The international correspondent, but are you tied into one particular news agency, or is it? Uh, well, I work for several, but I am the international correspondent for a network called Times Now. So I do a lot of the entertainment for them and uh, wire over my feeds and all my stories over to um, India. And I work for an NBC affiliate called PAX, and I do news stories for them as well. And then I host a lot of different shows. I've done stuff for the NBA. Um, I've done stuff with Warner Brothers. I'm actually gearing up to cover um, the uh, Conjuring press junket and Pacific Rim, the movie about the aliens attacking yes. the Earth. So I think that should be very interesting. Um, should, I, should I give my opinion on the movie now? No. Okay. Oh, man. I'd love to hear what you have to say. After. Let me go to the junket first, and then I'm going to call you up right after that. <laughs> Why don't don't, don't like take that? you to the junket. Yeah. You, don't, you want to take me with you? You don't need anybody to hold your microphone there because you know they'll ruin the, it for the, you. There yeah. is no better arm candy than me. 
The problem is he has <laughs> I no. I want to comment on that. She has no diplomacy. Please, please comment, please. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> Well, I must be bad because she's over there cracking up. Yes, <laughs> she is. She, she wants to slam you. I want her to throw a chair at you. Um, so, no, I've, I've got that going on. I'm a producer of a web series called Chado, which is um, about a group of friends um, and their trials and tributes of living here in America, in Hollywood. It follows a South Asian pair of siblings. So that's kind of a lot of fun because we've covered um, – all the different ethnic backgrounds in there and it's just a fun you know five to seven minute web series that we're hoping to launch on one of the networks eventually and i blog for dirty and 30 so um, i will let your minds think about that one and no, I, I got a question real quick it's not related to uh to that we'll get back to that but we keep using the term south asian yes this is the first time i've really heard anybody use that term really it's is it is it like is it like us Mexicans using Southeast Los Angeles, <laughs> right? <laughs> Which is or Beaner or something like that. <laughs> well, you know, okay. So basically, originally there used to be that term Asians, right? Who right. come from Asia. So you've got the Chinese, the Japanese, the Korean, and what was happening is. The or as we like to say, the chinos. The chinos, yes. Okay. <laughs> oh my god, I can't believe I just said that. <laughs> well, that's, that that so, just means Chinese okay, and Chinese, Spanish. Yes. So okay. So well, the Indians are they're they're the real term, like I say, beaners is desis. So okay. we're known as the desis. But what's happening in this whole Asian gamut is the Indians were getting lost. And so if you look at where India is located, do you know where it's located? Yeah, it's in South Asia. <laughs> well, okay, so basically the where the country's location is in Southeast Asia. There so that's hence the term South Asians, just to kind of distinguish. Okay. Um, we have a Indians. caller for you that has a question. Go ahead, caller. Hi. Hello. Hi. Hi. I have a question for Rasha. Yes. Hi, Rasha. Hello. just wanted to know, with um, your experience as a correspondent, uh, whether doing news or entertainment and everything um is there any one particular person you'd like to maybe interview in the future like somebody who you look up to somebody that you've always wanted to interview who would that be that's a great question thank you um you know actually one of the people that i've really wanted to interview that i haven't had a chance don't laugh it's will smith I find him to be a very talented individual, and um, I, I got to read a lot about him and find out how he gives back to community and the different things him and Jada do for children and just how they, what a great family unit they are, and I've never really had an opportunity to talk to him, and I find him interesting to see how his career Hello, has evolved from Fresh Prince to you. where they are now. So uh, Will Smith is, is one of the entertainers that I would love to interview. They said I look like him, but I don't know. Oh, wow. I, I don't see it. Ooh, Thanks for the call. The goatee. No, I, you don't. Okay, thank you. Thank you. <laughs> hey, hang up on that lady. <laughs> All right, we're going to the top of the hour. We'll be back quickly. Stick around. Special little studio guest, Rasha Goel. This is the Three Guys Rant on Rant Radio Network. I thought she was going to ask about Superman. It's Chef Bev Lazo with the Culinary Trend Show. Join me and my brigade every Thursday night from 8 to 9 p.m. where we will be cooking up some crazy stuff that will give you the appetite for discussion. It's all about the good food, good friends, and good times. Only here on RantRadioNetwork.com. You're listening to What Honesty Feels Like with Christine Sawicki that airs every Tuesday from 8 to 9 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. You can catch us on RantRadioNetwork.com. If you're one of the most successful people in the world, I want to talk to you. I want to know how you got there, where you're going, and who you're giving back to. So call me at 855-969-7268 and check in with me, the most successful people in the world.
Hi, I'm Aaron Michael Sanchez. And I'm Kelly B. Dolan. And we are excited to announce our show live with Aaron and Kelly is on Rant Radio Network. What do we talk about on our show, Kelly? We talk about everything from entertainment to business and tech, and we have a few laughs in between. <laughs> That's right. Go check us out on RantRadioNetwork.com. That's RantRadioNetwork.com. Check it out. Dirty Truth Radio Show, where we'll be talking about relationships, marriage, how to have sex, dating, first dating, what not to do while dating, why middle-aged women are very easy, don't talk about sex on a first date, why shouldn't you, don't say X about on a first date, why religion should never be mentioned, <laughs> <laughs> and be masculine, <laughs> and be masculine then, <laughs> alpha males, and alpha males, why women love alpha males but won't, but Girl, won't admit you know it, yes we do, I, 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 on Tuesdays from 6.30 to 7.30 p.m., only on Rant Radio no Network. What you do. What's up, everyone? Sports Guru here. Sick of looking at the same old boring websites? Well, check out the new SportsGuru.com for all the hottest training videos and all the biggest sports news. Become a VIP for only $4.99 and get premium access to everything the Sports Guru has to offer. The beautiful Gurus Girls, all my biggest sports picks, and much more. So get off that porn site and check out the new SportsGuru.com. Wow, y'all listening to Rat Radio Network, unpredictably and a tiny wow. Streaming live from Los Angeles, the Three Guys Rant with Arvin, Mike, and Phil. Check out our website at www.thetreeguysrant.com. The Three Guys Rant starts now. All right, we're back from the break. We're at the top of the second hour. Thanks for sticking around. We've got special in studio guest, Rasha Goel. I want to talk about something you touched on earlier, um, and, and I know you didn't use the term, but I'm curious. Racism. Yes. Being of Indian descent, I, I, you know, I can only imagine that with mainstream media, do you ever feel like an outsider? Or would you, feel, would you ever say that you've ever been treated like an outsider? Before they know her name or after they know her name? No, I mean, and where I'm going with it is because she was, too, she was touching on earlier where, as she named off some of the, uh, the main characters that are in today's movies and series. Right. And I'm sitting there thinking, oh, that's right, that's right, that's right. And we joke about this all the time. You know, I make fun of Arvin because Arvin will describe a woman by her color and ethnicity first. Oh. It's when he comes in. And, and, and I mean, he, like, good Lord, that hot-looking black woman is hot. Right. So, you know, he'll say, oh, that hot looking black Asian. And I'm and, and we always joke that. Really? That's what you saw first. Actually, I, I'm always like the first thing I saw was her booty. <laughs> <laughs> but where I'm going with it is that as you were talking about, for example, Raj from the Big Bang Theory. Right. Again, if you would have said name the Indian in the show, I'd be like, oh, crap. because I think. We've got both mindsets these days. A lot of people forget because it's just, it is what it is. And then we were, I, and I, I touched on only because what happened in San Antonio last week with the 11 year old boy who was singing, he was wearing the traditional getup for a mariachi. At it wasn't people. in San, I think it was in Florida. I thought it was in San Antonio. San Antonio. San Antonio. Okay. Texas. Yeah. Okay. And people, and again, I hate Texas. Okay. The whole family's from Texas. And it, <laughs> oh, me too. Yeah. So what uh, part of Texas? <laughs> Brownsville. Okay. Could they be no any browner? <laughs> So as far as I'm concerned, as long as they leave Cowboy Stadium alone, the rest of Texas can go straight to hell. Isn't that the butthole of America? Yeah. The literally. stadium? Brownsville. 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 Right Houston. There. Okay. So, yeah. And, and, and I was like, are you guys kidding me? You're attacking this kid? I, I mean, with so many things wrong in the world, we got that Jacko Snowden over there giving away secrets of the country. We've got an economy that's still in the tank. We've got all these other issues. But they were going to the Twitter sphere, just attacking this kid, calling him an illegal. Um, and, and I was just curious if you've fun. ever come across anything, but you know that if it's bad enough for the Hispanics. But I, I'm wondering because I know that that, that, I, that that's what I was asking. Because I would say before I, I before if we were to just meet on the street before yes. I, I would know your name, I would swear that you'd be Latina. Really. But yeah. again, and then after I would okay, know her name, but, but, I'm like, oh, that's much better. Which is You're great. That increases my market. So okay, thank but, but, you. That, that, but that's my point. <laughs> you, and again, not that you do it to be discriminatory, mm -hmm. but in all the time I've known you, you have the mindset that you identify, I met this hot looking Latina woman. Because I actually don't remember women's names, so I have to be able to put it oh, in some God, category. Arvin. What I'm saying <laughs> is. I need a blog about you on Dirty and 30. Exactly. <laughs> so you would have identified. The lovely Rasha as that. And what I'm seeing is, so this young man who was singing, instead of saying, oh, you know, he sang poorly, which he didn't, 
mm-hmm. or they didn't care for his outfit. That he, no, they were attacking his ethnicity. Had nothing to do with Which what he had done. For, I mean, that's not even important. And, and that's where I'm going with. So you know, I I, I remember reading when the Mindy Project was going to come on earlier in the season. It had nothing to do. Uh, you know, when I looked at some of the things, I didn't find it necessarily humorous. Right. But I had nothing against her because she was Indian. Oh, I thought right. she was hot. Okay. Well, again, what I'm saying really? though is yeah. that we have really these people. <laughs> <laughs> Do you know who the hell we're talking about? I don't think yeah, he does. The big boobed Indian girl. <laughs> That's all I remember. Big boobed okay, Indian girl. Have you girl. seen her face? <laughs> I was looking at her this face. No, no, I'm not. I'm not gonna. I'm not. Is saying this how she's... you talk about people when they leave too? I hope have, you have nice things to say about me when I leave. From it, here. It'll probably be said about you while you're still in the room. <laughs> <laughs> You, you've made him feel a little too comfortable. Oh, yeah. So uh, well, my, my whole long-winded question was, you know, and then I know that San Antonio did the right thing. The Spurs brought the little boy back a second time, right. kind of in, in your face. And now, I thought, go ahead. Well, is he part of some kind of band or group? Why Why was he, he in full? He was one of the finalists on America's Got Talent last season. Oh, okay. And then it the makes sense. Can, he can sing. He can yeah, sing. I heard it, and I, I didn't. I he didn't sound okay, bad. But see, you say it makes sense because, okay, he was a star. Take it, take it a step back further. Two weeks ago was all the hoopla with the Cheerios commercial. I have no idea. Which one was this? The interracial couple that had the little girl with the curly oh, hair. Oh, 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 okay. I did hear that. People yeah. took to, you know, the, Mike called me right away. He was furious. But, you know, and I'm like, what is up with all these losers? So I thought, I don't know if you, did you see the parody that came back on it? No, no, I, I, didn't. no I didn't. Was that Saturday Night Live or something? I'm sorry? Was it on Saturday Night Live? No, no, no. It was on YouTube. If you get a chance, you know, you can go see it. But bottom line was there was a mother and her little girl. And the little girl said, Mom, you know, why are we different? She's like, oh, honey, we're not. Just people are stupid. They're mean. So she goes over. And instead of pouring Cheerios on the dad because they're, they're good for your heart, it was another woman. And it was a black woman to top it off. So I thought it was great. It was, it was an interracial lesbian couple. <laughs> so awesome. the woman gets You know up, what? Now I'm in. in. Now I want to eat some I Cheerios. But what's so that's funny the is the whole the, the premise of the video was Tell me it. this isn't the commercial. That's her right there. Oh. Okay. That, that's, that's the second parent. That's the parody. In, in the, yes. Yeah, in the response. And then why the she, why she got to look like she just broke her back or something? Or she's like on <laughs> welfare of some sort. Hey, okay. hey. Because she's black, she's got to be a welfare. Is that what you're saying, man? Oh. Arvin no? at the Three Guys Ranch. What is wrong with you? All hate Look at that, Arvin man. at the Three Guys Ranch. She looks like she's on Dave Chappelle's skin. What the hell? She so, does not look comfortable, that's for sure. That's, that's so. all I'm saying. She doesn't look comfortable. She's like she broke her back. All I'm saying is, though, but I, I, oh, and this is where I was going. And again, I, I'm not trying to say that. You that you're black. Experience that you <laughs> no, but as, as being. I, I'm, I got to go look in the mirror again. As being of Indian descent, <laughs> do you feel that we've progressed enough? Or do you feel any of the, ba- you know, not backlash, but any of the um, indifference? I think we're still progressing. Um, I've personally never experienced something. Luckily, I think the last time I experienced something was in high school, where I'll never forget I was on a, on a school bus going home, and some kid told me, he's like, you need to go back to your country. And I just looked at him <laughs> thinking. You mean Hawaii? What? Yeah, yeah exactly. I was just like, <laughs> okay, what does that mean? You know, I was like 14 at that time, and I thought, Wow, what does he mean? Because I was, I was born and brought up here. But um, when I look at the entertainment industry, I think there's still, we still haven't progressed as much because a lot of the South Asian actors, they're still being given the typical Indian roles with an Indian accent. And so you get a great, you mentioned that when you saw me, that I was Latina. And I think that's great in the sense that I don't want people to look at me and think, oh, South Asian host. I'm a host. I'm a correspondent. I'm a person. I, I, there shouldn't be that judgment of it. Oh, an Indian host. Yes, that happens to be my background. Um, doesn't necessarily mean I have an accent or um, I wear a, a bindi, a dot on my head, or I walk around in saris. I mean, I've, I've actually heard comments like that. Oh, where's your sorry? And I'm thinking. You're like, sorry? <laughs> <What>? <laughs> Are you sorry? Um, so, it, you know, it, it's interesting, but I think there's still a lot of growing to do as far as entertainment because a lot of the South Asian actors or Indian actors are still getting pigeonholed in roles. I think Cal Penn is one of the few that's been able to walk away from I'm Indian and not, you know, be stuck in Indian roles. But like Raj, you brought up, you know, Raj is Indian. Raj has an accent. That's how you relate to him. But I I do think that they do a good job with him where he defends it. Oh, absolutely. I I think I I really, I think that (laughs) he spends a a great deal of time when he says, I find that offensive. Why? Because I'm Indian. His parents, he goes through the whole thing. Um, I I do like the self-deprecating humor that they've put on him to be able to attack some of the... No, they've played that well in Big Bang Theory. Um, But I think with other actors still, I mean, there's... 
you know, and just with the Latina market, as you mentioned, it's been a long road for ethnic actors, ethnic entertainers to really get out there and get recognized for their name and not just their ethnic background. You know, I, th I think of George Lopez all the time, and I think it's so neat that he was able to use his ethnic background, but his show, yes, they threw in the little puns that a Latina family will experience, but I don't necessarily just look at him like, oh, he's a Latina guy and that's it. There was, it was a show that anybody could relate to. There were things that happened in that show when it was running that, you know, all of us could relate to or see incidents happening at our home. Yeah, could you, Mikey? Nope. Because I was going to say, yeah. I, I don't know if your house is that Well, functional. is it like what, racism? I think there's still a lot of racism around. I mean, look at how people, a lot of people on the internet uh, relate or talk about the president, you know. It, it's, I think it's it has disgusting. a lot to do with, <laughs> with race, period. Nothing to do with his policies. They just attack him because he's black. He's black? I thought he was Mexican. <laughs> <laughs> and he's half black at that. <laughs> so, you know, and it's like when, it's, it's, uh, yeah, I guess it's, it's not racism, but st a stereotype. Uh, not long ago, we went to that little you mini market down the street. I was thinking that. And the that, owner and was I'm following like, him around the I store. Want, I don't want to, I didn't want to bring it up. <laughs> yeah. I didn't want to bring it up. That's exactly what I was thinking about. Yeah, not, not so long ago, we stopped by. We we're coming from a meeting or something. I don't know where we we're coming from. And there's a liquor store down the street. And. We we're coming for a meeting, so I was dressed up nicer than this, and I'm walking around because they had just come out with the new Budweiser, and then Ruffles had come out with their Sriracha and their their three different lines. So I'm walking around, you know, taking my time looking for what I'm looking for. As I'm walking around, I keep noticing like there's like a shadow behind me, and I'm like, you know, not even thinking about it. And then I look over, and it's the owner. And I go down another aisle. I look back. There he is. I'm looking in the beer aisle. He's like walking behind me. And so finally, as I'm walking up to the counter, he kind of walks around to the other side. And I told him, I go, hey, I think I just got profiled and I'm basically in a suit. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, it was pretty funny. What, uh, what race was the owner? Indian. <laughs> <laughs> One of my people? Oh, God. Yeah, they judge. See, now that's Ouch. funny that you made that statement. <laughs> because, I, you know, we, we go places and these guys will make fun of me because Mike says that I, I think I'm white. I tell him, look, I was, I'm fifth generation. I was born and raised here. I don't know anything about Mexico other than I enjoy the tacos. You know, we've gone there a few times for deep sea fishing. That's it. That's the extent <laughs> of it. So, you know, when, and, and every once in a while they'll come up with, what about your people? My people? <laughs> I'm like, I'm like, I was born here. Right. This is my people. So. I don't think your people here want you, Phil. That's fine. <laughs> they don't have to want me, but I'm, I'm from here. You need to go back to your country. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, just like me. <laughs> yeah. You got to go back to Hawaii and I got to go back to East Seriously, Los, apparently. that's so. what I'm saying. Yeah, I, I I don't know. I think it's just. Uh, but okay. Well, so, so what's what's dirty and thirty? Dirty and thirty is. Well, you this... you hung on to that one for a while, didn't you? Yeah, you've been thinking about that this yep. entire time, huh? Mm -hmm. You're like, well, I'm dirty. Well, hold on, hold on, let's dim the lights. Can we? Let me give you the scoop. The lights didn't dim, but I'll give you some scoop on dirty and thirty. It is a website blog where basically we cover topics of anything uh, that women experience during their 30s. So it could be anything sexual related. It could be about people who recently got married, pregnancy, um, single dating life, a whole range of, you know, a gamut of different topics. So you're saying I can go on this site and look for single 30-year-old women? You could get advice from single 30-year-old women on there. It's not a dating site, but we offer advice and information. On, on, on where to find 30-year-old women? Possibly, yes. And you can, you can learn about their insecurities, their problems, and you can... <laughs> Attack better. Uh, uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, Alan's going to bring up the side for us Are after the break. For Thirty year old women. I'm looking for. <clears throat> <laughs> What are you looking yeah, for? Yeah, I was Marvin? waiting for that. That is my question no, no, of no, the no. day. No, no, no. Because uh, last uh, week you were looking for an Indian tranny. <laughs> <laughs> so why, 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 why does it got to be Indian? Why does it got to be Indian? Know, What's up with that? <laughs> I figured <laughs> it'd be fitting. <laughs> she was in a Puerto Rican tranny. Those are hot. <laughs> wow. All right. You're listening to the Three Guys Rant on the Rat Radio Network. Special in studio guest, Rashi Kowal. We'll be right back after the break. Stick around. Call the Three Guys Rant now. Would you like to comment? Get on the radio. Check out our website at www.thethreeguysrant.com. The Three Guys Rant.
Welcome to the Monster Marketing Group, your one-stop shop for all your marketing needs, anything you need to make that marketing and advertising campaign stand out. We're your people. Concepts, design, production, social media, anything that you can dream up, we're going to make happen for you. And we can do it in a very quick turnaround. Please give us a call at 888-49-MONSTER. The experts know that for pastry, Baker's Bodega has it all. Exclusive brands like Westco Bankmark, Satin Ice, and Pastry Pride. One-on-one -on -one day seminars for cake decorating and gelatin art. So for our service, wide range of ingredients and supplies, and for the low prices, Baker's Bodega has it all. But you don't need to be an expert. Baker's Bodega, 7869 Paramount Boulevard in Pico Rivera. Come, we're waiting for you. Dirty Truth Radio Show, where we'll be talking about relationships, marriage, how to have sex, dating, first dating, what not to do while dating, why middle-aged women are very easy, don't talk about sex on the first day, why shouldn't you, don't say X about on the first day, why religion should never be mentioned, <laughs> <laughs> and demasculating, and demasculating men, <laughs> alpha males, and alpha males, why women love alpha males but won't, but Girl, won't admit it, yes we do, on Tuesdays from 6.30 to 7.30 p.m., only on RantRadioNetwork.com. What's up, everyone? Sports Guru here. Sick of looking at the same old boring websites? Well, check out the new SportsGuru.com for all the hottest training videos and all the biggest sports news. Become a VIP for only $4.99 and get premium access to everything the Sports Guru has to offer. The beautiful Gurus Girls, all my biggest sports picks, and much more. So get off that porn site and check out the new SportsGuru.com. Wow, y'all listening to Rat Radio Network, unpredictably entertaining. Wow. Streaming live from Los Angeles and worldwide, the Three Guys Rant with Arvin, Mike, and Phil. Check out our website at www.thetreeguysrant.com. The Three Guys Rant starts now. All right, we're back from the break, and uh, special in studio guest, Rasha Guell, is going to stick around with us as we cover some of the... Uh, more mundane and I call them idiotic and stupid topics that Arvid and Mike are going to have. But hey, I got to be fair. So, gentlemen, what do you have for us? I think he just insulted you. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? In order for him to insult me, I have to be paying attention. Uh, I was going to say. Go ahead, Arvid. Talk to me about game five. Were you pissed last night? Miami won. Is that what we're talking about? <laughs> San Antonio won, sir. I, I was going to oh. say, what game did you watch? <laughs> I might have seen a replay. <laughs> Okay, Mikey, what do you got? <clears throat> no, I'm curious to hear what Arvin's got. No, no, no. Mine is going to be a lead-in into what she was talking about, about dirty, dirty and thirty. So then go ahead and do that now. What's Talk Okay, about. well, you Let's were talking. Let's do it. I was asking you, off air, what is your segment to dirty and thirty? And your response was. Tell me, were you listening? <laughs> no, no, I was. It, it, <laughs> bake, bake. <laughs> That's a good one, Rush. I like that. You know what? Damn it! Don't put me on the spot like that. <laughs> she just backhanded you. She she really did. No, it, it's it's the same thing that I've always said. Women need to keep up the appearance. Yes. At least that's the way that I took it, and I think that's that's so true. Regardless if you're married, dating, boyfriend, single, anything, I think you should do it. Not necessarily just for whoever you're with, but more for yourself. I absolutely agree with you, Arvin, because I find, and I've even seen this within some of my friends who have kids. You know, people just tend to let themselves go. And I really think when you take care of yourself, you feel good. You feel motivated. You you feel inspired. And I think it's really important when you're especially with someone, whether you're dating, whether you're married, that, you know, that spark always needs to stay. You always need to continue growing. And I think it's always important. Like, I want to look good for my spouse. You know, I don't, if it's like, if I look like crap, that's what I'm admitting you, to him. How long have you been married? <sighs> Eight years. <laughs> wow, those must be some long, hard eight years. <laughs> They've been eight great years. But, you know, it's. I think it's so important to keep looking beautiful mm -hmm. and, and, and keep that energy up because when you feel good about yourself, you admit that to other people. And I do see that women, they just get – they get burnt out and they just let themselves go. And I think for men especially, you know, you want you want to be attracted to your partner. You want to have that spark. You so want to let – me, Let me ask you this. Why is it – I don't talk from personal experience. But Are you sure? I'm, 
<laughs> yes, almost. <laughs> Why is it that when women do that, they let themselves go, relationships over, and then they start working up that hill again to try to find the next victim? Why not do? Why not do that six months earlier? Wow! So this really, this, and this is what you're trying to write about, huh? Yeah, it's going to be yeah the hate mail. I can already <laughs> see it. The postman's going to bring it because they don't want you to see it digitally. <laughs> Wait, let me get this right. So you're saying that after they break up, they start right. keeping them right? Because I've seen that happen with a couple of my friends too, where they stay together for the kids, blah blah blah, this that and the other, and then once it's okay to leave, they're out, and then the woman get all gets all depressed, and then she starts working, going back to the gym, watching what she eats, and then she tries to get hot She's again. Back in the market, man. So why do that it's, in the first place? I think that's a great question because that could have helped keep the spark alive. Right. But maybe right. there was something in those relationships. Maybe there's something that's just not going to last. That's not going to make it, um, you know, continue. But. A lot of women do that because it's like now they're single, they're back in the market, and it's almost like, well, no one's going to look at me if I look trashed up and crappy or, you they know, just not have, taking care of myself. They should have thought that while they were submerged. I, I agree with you, and that's why I tell women that you've got to keep that going. You can't just, you know, let yourself go. I mean, yes, you have kids. Yes, you have a job. Yes, you have a billion things going on, but you got to look good. You got to look good because, you know what, we only live once, and I want to go – Looking, looking good at in my grave. What, what, I, all the time. what I want to ask, when is it that is that, that time, that point where it's okay to leave the relationship? You know. I think you know. When Deep you're down done. inside, you, you know. Huh? You know when you're done. No, I'm asking because I'm looking for that time. When is it? <laughs> <laughs> so you're trying to find that time. <laughs> you know, that's a good question. I think when you no longer look forward to going home, it's time to move on. I think when your heart doesn't palpitate yeah. or, and or feel excited there. anymore. I've been there, so I know exactly what that is. But, Harvey. Yeah, I'm broken heart. Do you have any friends? I do have friends. We'll talk after the show. Well, I'm like, male friends like, for Mikey. <laughs> <laughs> I was talking about male like, friends for Mikey. Oh. I got male friends. I got female friends. Well, the, you're, you're, I got you're, mixed friends. You were done at male. He was happy <laughs> okay. with that. His eyes lit up. And <laughs> <laughs> no, but it did. It, it, and, and I just kind of want to interrupt you because this was on, on one of my things that I wanted to talk about. Over the last month, there's been a lot of graduations. I've gone to some of the graduations, and I haven't been to a graduation in a long time. And I was blown away by the way people look nowadays, the way that they show up, the way that they're... I had There was these fat, 500-pound, overweight guys in the back that showed up in sweats and sandals. There was women that looked like they just rolled out of bed and went to the graduation. Why do you look at us when he said fat 500-pounders, dude? I know, and I don't wear sandals. <laughs> they they basically... <laughs> <laughs> they basically look the way he's dressed today. At the graduation? At the graduation. And, I mean, I wasn't in a suit, but at least I cared enough for, you know, respect enough for the whole event to show up. And there was people that, there was a guy that looked like he was getting ready to go to the beach either before or he had just come back from the beach. There was women that just literally look, didn't even look like they combed their hair. I'm like, when, when what, as a society, where, did we where look? were you? At, what graduation was this? What, what city? city were you in? I was in Santa Fe Springs. Oh. Hmm. So it's not it's not a dirt bike city. I mean, it's surrounded by dirt bike cities, but it's not a dirt bike city. <laughs> so I was just wondering when when did we just stop caring as a, as a society? I yeah, I'm you, actually you, surprised to hear that because I haven't seen that recently. I think that really sucks. I just think that's wrong. You're right. Like, I mean, this is a formal event. It's a great celebratory event, and I think out of re just respect, we should be right. dressed decently. No, right. I completely agree with you on that. I'm I'm with you on that one. That. I think it's wrong. But you know what's so funny? I think people just don't care anymore because there are places I go to. And we just don't have respect. Right. But is it – okay, and I guess the question is I, I come from the food industry. And the last – you know, Is that I because like – because you eat every day? Yeah, that's what it was. <laughs> but when I was running the restaurants, well, the, the two chefs that I was working for, the last chain that I was with, we had several stores. And they were very upset that I wouldn't hire people – with the tattoos and the plugs in their ears, um, the mohawks, you know, they wanted a they wanted a certain feeling. They wanted a certain. Oh, you're readiness. you're one of those. I, well, because again, it's when they would come in and they weren't in a shirt and tie. I didn't think it was an appropriate interview. So for me, you know, I was director of operations and I looked at them a certain way. I wanted a resume. Right. Well, the number of people who would come in with the torn jeans, no resume, asked to borrow a pen, it was one of those things. Well, the chefs, the two owners. That's what they wanted. They wanted. How long ago was this? Because th this is like way over the top now for what? you to see somebody that 
Sure, but it's four, it was four years ago when I left the industry. And it's, it's way worse now. That's what I'm saying. It was, it was already starting then. And one of the things that they were saying was don't discriminate against them. You know, that's what we're looking for. So I think that because there's such a general acceptance now where, you know, the, the, the trend to be not trashy, that's the wrong word, but. Don't care. Exactly. Don't care. The it, whole, it's, it's me. It's, it's, it's a, you know, it's a me, it's it me is. world. It's about me. So yeah. I'm going to come in and wear what I want to wear, and I'm going to do what I want to do. And I'm going to eat what I want to do, and then that's when my husband's going out and cheating and banging the, the Because the I've assistant. gained 200 pounds. <laughs> there was a lot of that going on, and I was like, holy <laughs> There was a lot of banging going on? At the you know, graduation? Funny, but wish. how it rolled off his tongue what when he says my was husband. this? Yeah, I know. That's what I want to know. <laughs> it was the adult film industry graduation. Okay, then that makes sense. <laughs> Why were you so angry that your husband cheated? cheated on you look at you because it's turning I, red. I, gave, I gave the 10 best years of my life to mikey you, you've let you've let uh, yourself go man so you and mike you're finally admitting that you and mikey were a couple i let myself go on mikey <laughs> wow um i think we need some therapy here <laughs> yeah I, I don't know if there's enough therapy to help either one of them <laughs> okay there's not a couch big enough you, you know what are we going to break okay yeah I'll ask, I'll, ask, I'll ask you as when soon as you come started back. talking they cut you off actually I know, on the return we're going to have Gene Morrison on line one Arvin's going to bring us up to speed stick around we got special needs to do again Rasha Goel we'll be right back Looking for a delicious, fresh family meal that's ready when you are and easy on your budget? Welcome to Piara Pizza. We make our pizzas with handmade dough, 100% real cheese, and tomato sauce blended with our own spices. Nothing is ever frozen. We always have large pepperoni and cheese pizzas fresh and waiting for you for only $5. Or choose one of our specialty pizzas. We have veggie, meat lovers, supreme, and Hawaiian. Add an order of our amazing hot wings, cheesy bread, or breadsticks. Our locations are ultra modern, ultra clean, and open seven days a week. Visit any one of our locations today. Or check us out on the web at www.piarapizza.com. Piara Pizza. Fresh, hot, and ready for you when you come in. Stop in for your Piara Pizza today. What up, foodie freaks? It's Chef Bev Laza with the Culinary Trend Show. Join me and my brigade every Thursday night from 8 to 9 p.m. where we will be cooking up some crazy stuff that will give you the appetite for discussion. It's all about the good food, good friends, and good times. Only here on RantRadioNetwork.com. Hi, I'm Aaron Michael Sanchez. And I'm Kelly B. Dolan. And we are excited to announce our show live with Aaron Kelly is on Rant Radio Network. What do we talk about on our show, Kelly? We talk about everything from entertainment to business and tech. And we have a few laughs in between. That's <laughs> right. Go check us out on RantRadioNetwork.com. That's RantRadioNetwork.com. Check it out. Streaming live from Los Angeles and worldwide, The Three Guys Rant with Arvin, Mike, and Phil. Check out our website at www.thetreeguysrant.com. The Three Guys Rant starts now. Y ya regresamos. ¿De dónde? You're horrible, man. This is Three Guys Rant. Arvin, Mike, and Phil here at Rent Radio Network. If you want to call in, 855-693-GUYS. We actually have uh, our lines uh, started blowing up here. We have Gene Morrison, which should be on line one. Gene, are you there? Yes. Can you hear me? Yes. Perfect. Perfect. How are you doing? I'm doing great. How are you doing? I'm doing great. So it's this is Gene Morrison, which is gorgeous, sultry, pop punk, urban R&B artist. Wow, thank you. <laughs> I'll take that any day. Can you say that again? <laughs> I can say it. I just I just wish I had a sexier voice to say it again. Mikey, you want to say it again? Está bien buena. Uh, <laughs> she, she, she got nothing. She's that, like, I don't understand that. that. Yeah, that was better. <laughs> it was still, I mean, yours, yours was still good, but that was good, too. All right, Gene, so why don't you tell us a little bit about yourself? Hmm, okay. Uh, I'm a singer, songwriter, uh, 
I have a band called uh, Morris and Poe. Uh, right now, I'm releasing my solo album called Beauty in the Breakdown, and um, and I'm really excited about it. It's sexy, it's um, emotional, it's exciting, and I hope everybody digs it. Now, if I'm reading this correctly, Neil Rogers is featured in, in your video? Neil Rogers, yes. He's featured, and uh, he actually played on two tracks on the album that is coming out. Um, he played on the single that's out now called Naughty. And uh, he's phenomenal. He killed it. And I love him. <laughs> okay, so is your album out already, or, or is it getting ready to come out? Um, it, it had kind of a soft um, uh, release, but it's going to be fully uh, released at the end of summer. So, like, late summer, it'll be completely out everywhere. Okay, so is there a single now that somebody can uh, either get on SoundCloud or buy somewhere? Yes. You can get it on uh, Amazon. Um, you can get it pretty much anywhere. And the single is called Naughty, featuring Niall Rogers. And um, and that's the single that's out now. Okay. Well, I know that we have it. So l- l- we're going to go ahead and play it so everybody can get a sneak peek at the song. Awesome. Hold on. <laughs> I'll just be quiet. <laughs> I was wondering if I can get a piece of you, the piece you want to give me to. What if I ask nicely, baby, if you knew that I would do it, would you do it? Let me run. Gene. Yes. Now I just got corrected. I wasn't supposed to say sneak peek. What is the right term? <laughs> that that's actually cool. You could say a um a preview. A preview. A preview. Yeah. <laughs> so a Gene, preview. we we actually, a preview. we actually have somebody a caller here that wants to uh, talk to you. So uh, give us a second here. Okay. Caller, are you there? Tell me you hung up on him, Phil. Caller, are you there? I'm here. There we go. This is Angie. Angie, how you doing? Gene, are you still there? I'm here. Okay, perfect. Angie, did you want to talk to Gene? Yeah. Want to say hey? Hey. <laughs> <laughs> What's up, Snowflake? Classic. <laughs> Love, what's up with you? How's everything going? <laughs> I'm feeling great. Yep. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Do you have yep, a question you out. would like to ask me that I would love to answer? <laughs> uh, well, shit, I don't know. I, uh, <laughs> you can always answer everything. <laughs> um, hmm. Let me think. Um, hey, Angie, Angie, where are, you, where are you calling from, Angie? I'm calling from Peoria, Illinois. How, how did you hear about Jean? Uh, I, I saw her Twitter. <laughs> oh. She put, she, she puts Good. she puts everything from pictures to what she's doing on there, and you know I'm a follower, I'm a fan. So all right, so you, so you've heard her music before? Oh yeah, I downloaded it. All right, do you have, do you have a question that you want to ask her? Maybe what I don't know what her favorite uh-huh. color is. <laughs> Did you just want to listen to me? Um, oh yeah, I got a question. What what are you wearing? Um, oh. Right now, <laughs> I'm wearing nothing but a towel because I figured why not. Hey, uh, Gene, you, you should probably take a picture of that and All put right. that on Twitter. Well, Angie, thank you so much you for calling it. Gene. <laughs> wow. Well, we, we lost Angie there. That was kind of sexy. Wow. All right. Uh, Gene's got fans <clears throat> everywhere. Yeah, Phil, I, I have no blood in my brain right now. You might want to take this one. <laughs> wow. Hey, Gene, I, so I noticed one of the uh, things that you won, one of the most 25 stylish, most, forgive me, 25 most stylish people in the Triangle area. For Carolina Style Magazine. Now, Arvin says that he's the uh, 
the clothes horse or the style monger of the group. I've said that? Nice. Yeah. I, that doesn't even sound like English <laughs> to me. <laughs> so what, um, what, what, what did it take for you to win the most um, stylish? I guess they felt as though my style uh, influenced people or was cool. You know what? I was just, I just thought it was kind of cool. I just kind of like get up and throw on whatever I think works. And I guess people think it's good. <laughs> I like it. Now, one of the notes um, I have here also is that it says you did Love is a Battlefield video. Is that a remake or is that your version? That is my cover that I did with the band. And um, it's our own version of Love is a Battlefield that was first done by Pat uh, Benatar. And we decided to do our own, uh, I guess, uh, tribute to it. And, uh, yeah, and people really thought that it was great. And I was like, man, I do not want to sing Pat Benatar because she is a monster. But I got in there and I, you know, did it from my heart and everybody seemed to love it. So I was happy about that. Well, that's cool. Now, you, you've had some amazing uh, special guests here. I mean, we talked about Neil Rogers. I see Madonna on here, David Bowie, Duran Duran. I mean, those those are some big names in the music. Yeah, those are all people that Niall has worked with in his life. I mean, his roster is just ridiculous. When you look at everybody that he's ever worked with, it's kind of, it kind of makes you go, oh, my God. Like, he's worked with... Uh, Diana Ross. He's worked with uh, da- Daft Punk. He, he he actually just worked on their latest single, uh, Get Lucky. Oh wow! And so it was yeah. So it was pretty awesome to work with him. You know, ha- having him, you know, just kind of put his magic on my music was just an honor. That's awesome. So so I'm a lucky girl. So <laughs> and you also have a clothing line. Yes, I have a clothing line, and it's called. Uh, paparazzi, and it's kind of like um, rock star meets steampunk meets everything. Awesome. Um, I kind of wanted to do something that was different and sexy, um, but still kind of art. And uh, yeah, so since I like to dress weird, I figured why not make everybody else dress as weird as I do? <laughs> make everybody else weird. I like that. I like that. Do you carry anything in triple X? <laughs> uh, yeah, well, of course. I mean, right now I'm wearing a towel. So it's not exactly from my line, but maybe I should just make a line of towels. Uh, I'm going to say it again. Maybe you should take a picture and post that on Twitter. (laughs) You know what, dude? I'll tell you what I'm going to order for you. I went online to look at Papa Roxy. She's got a white colored thong that says made in the USA. Yeah, that that, that wouldn't be good because 30 minutes with me, that thong would not be white anymore. (laughs) (laughs) Hey, Gene, how can uh, can the fans and the listeners get a hold of you? Where can they find you? Um, They can go to my website, jeanmorrison.com. Uh, they can uh, find me on Facebook under Gene Morrison and on Twitter under Gene Morrison. I just made everything as simple as possible. You just type it in. You find me. I'm right there. I gotta and say, you'll see pictures of me in thongs and a towel. <laughs> nice. What what upcoming events are you going to be doing, or would you like to plug anything that's coming up? Oh gosh. Uh, well, I'll be going on tour um, late summer, so make sure that you go on the website to check out tour dates. Um, and just the uh, album that will be uh, coming out in the late summer. I'm just really excited. Uh, new videos will be posted from songs off of the album in the next coming weeks. And uh, just check out my website. Keep uh, following me because uh, I'm here to entertain you. Now, is, is a tour going to make it all the way out to the West Coast? Yeah, we are touring all over the uh, United States, and we are looking to hit uh, Europe as well. That's awesome. Because we love... Everyone, everywhere. Okay. Well, when no, you, I want to touch as many people as possible. I, I want you literally. to touch us too. <laughs> Arvin would like you. Well, to. <laughs> when I go in station, I promise I will touch you as much as possible. There you go. <laughs> hey, Gene, I just got a. Uh, one of the engineers asked a question. Is it okay to play your music here on rotation when we do our live streams? I would love that. Okay. I would be honored. You guys are great, and I think that would be fantastic. That's awesome. So, and anytime you want to bring me in, I will be right there, being as crazy as the rest of you. Well, whenever in you're whenever you're in LA, we'd love to have you here in studio. Maybe do a live performance. Oh yeah, I would love that. Okay. Well, we look forward to it. Best of luck on the tour, and thank you so much for calling in. Thank you, and thank you for having me, guys. And um, watch out for that white song. I will make sure that I send it in the mail, and I want lots of pictures. You got it. Have a great <laughs> evening. <laughs> You too. Take care. <laughs> bye bye. Oh, that's awesome, Marvin. If she sends you a white thong, buddy, um, 
Yeah, don't share with us. Maybe uh, even I want that picture. I was gonna say if Rasha <laughs> wants it, that's great. But uh, yeah, Mike and I, I like, I'm, I'm sorry, I'm already throwing up in my blushing. mouth. He's blushing. In my head, all I'm all I'm thinking and hearing is thongs and towels. <laughs> Um, yeah, I got nothing for you. I got nothing. Um, that was quite sexy. I'm a little hot now. Now? Now? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know, what's funny right now, I just got a text and it says that Rasha should be a regular guest or, or should be the co-host on the show. Wow. Thank you. Know you know what? Cool. So we should get rid of Arvin and bring her in. That would be awesome. Oh. That, that, that you know what? Work. I'm actually going on vacation, so this might actually I could work. be a fill-in. Oh, that'd be great. And you're never coming back? And then fill-in sometimes replace... <laughs> yes yes don't you have a plane to catch somewhere <laughs> to india well she's got to go back to her country yeah you got to go back to your country right <laughs> you're not leaving the country are you no oh so you're not. she's going to hawaii <laughs> have you not been listening no are you wow. he bought my ticket he's flying me out to hawaii i like it i'm surprised because he won't even buy us lunch but you know oh you bought, you bought her it's because you're not an attractive 30 a dirty 30 <laughs> Uh, isn't it dirty and 30? Get the website right, dude. All right, you're listening to the Three Guys Radio with special in-studio guests, Rasha Goel. We'll be right back after the break for the final segment. Stick around. Baker's Bodega has it all, but you don't need to be an expert. Baker's Bodega, 7869 Paramount Boulevard in Pico Rivera. Come, we're waiting for you. Welcome to the Monster Marketing Group, your one-stop shop for all your marketing needs. Anything you need to make that marketing and advertising campaign stand out, we're your people. Concepts, design, production, social media, anything that you can dream up, we're going to make happen for you. And we can do it in a very quick turnaround. Please give us a call at 888-49-MONSTER. Streaming live from Los Angeles and worldwide, The Three Guys Rant with Arvin, Mike, and Phil. Hot topics and headlines. Love, doctors. Politics. Arvin's Corner. The Three Guys Rant starts now. All right, we're back from the break for the final segment. We've got special in-studio guest, Rasha Goel, and she's going to tell us about an upcoming event. That's right. You know, I'm so excited. Actually, it's been stressful and exciting, but I am leading, I am producing a Bollywood production that's coming up on June 22nd at Cal Poly Pomona. It's a dance show featuring, I'd say, over 100 participants, which include kids, because it's more of a showcase, but we are celebrating 100 years of Indian cinema. So um, we're, we're quite excited. We're quite excited. Oh, are, are we back already? You know what? For those of us that, that do this, yeah, we, we were back. But, you know. <laughs> That's all right, Irvin. Go ahead. <laughs> Continue. So what, what time is the event? And I'm sorry, where is it again? The event is at 4 p.m. at Cal Poly Pomona, and people can log on to bollywoodstepdance.com to get more information. Cal Poly is an awesome college. That's where our intern is from. Really? Yeah. She's a Bronco. Well, that's where my uh, daughter goes. Or he. Oh, Cal Poly? Mm -hmm. Well, there's our intern back there. I I think he's sleeping in the corner, which is funny. (laughs) (laughs) Sounds like what would you hear? (laughs) All right. Arvin, what else do you have then? It is the final segment, so we'll let you speak now because you can only talk for 10 more minutes. Well, he took my notes. I don't know what my topics are. That's why I write things down. Any advice? Any guidance? Um, Why are women so angry in general? (laughs) Because you men make us angry. No, oh. no, no, no. no. <laughs> you women allow men to uh, make you that angry. We're not angry. What kind of women are you meeting, Arvin? That's what I want to know. He where, always comes in with that. Where is he going to meet these women? That's what I want to know. Now, why I do think they have such a big, camera behind big him. Adam's apple. <laughs> <laughs> what? <laughs> They're not supposed to? <laughs> you find that sexy? Wow. 
Um, what do you find? Uh, yeah, what do you find sexy, Arvin? A woman with a job. Okay. <laughs> There's a lot out there. She doesn't even need. A, she doesn't even need a pulse after that. I'm good. <laughs> Are you having a hard time finding women with jobs? I still want to know where you're going to find these. Women. I, know what, I kind of am actually. <laughs> I wanted to know where he was going to go with that statement. That, that was, uh... I mean, the kind of jobs that uh, the women that I meet have, I usually have to pay them at the end. Okay. <laughs> well then, that explains a lot, and, Arvin. And, and, and they always come home with a lot of singles. <laughs> <laughs> wow um okay mikey what else do you got <laughs> what you didn't like that hey so just real quick do you think they're gonna find hoffa this time they're looking for him again yeah no they found a new spot where they think he's buried no yeah mm. isn't that amazing that they keep looking for this guy after all these years do we have nothing at this point who, who no, gives a crap I, I don't yeah i don't know why they want to find him i, I don't i don't understand the uh Okay, it's like we found him. Okay, now what? Yeah, is that going to solve anything? or? No. No, because I remember reading one time how they thought that they had taken him out on a fishing boat, dumped his body, you know, so that the sharks or he could, you know, decayed out there. Right. So I, I don't know why the incessant need to find his bones. That's all they're going to find at this That's point. Retarded. If they do. It's absolutely retarded. Well, that is but I do have a question. I know, I know. Oh, go ahead. No, no, no I'm just going to say it. It's okay, the, I'll take the it. FBI, <laughs> the FBI is, is searching. So, I mean, it's costing money. You know, right, that's what I'm money. saying. Exactly. That's retarded. So. so we're paying for this. Yeah. So uh, I do have a question. I know yesterday was Father's Day. You're married. Do you guys have any kids? No. Is is Are, are you back? <laughs> <laughs> I'm waiting for him to recover. Okay, go on. Are you back in the good graces with your father for not being uh, uh, in the medical field? Oh, yeah. No, I've always been on good graces with him. I mean, he's never had a problem. I, I always have felt bad, I think, that I wasn't able to pursue that dream for him. I, but okay. um, I, Out of curiosity, your, your brother didn't follow that either. So what is he now? He's a financial advisor. Well, that's so good. So he has his own company, yes. That's awesome. That's awesome. <laughs> so my question is, what did you guys do for Father's Day? You honestly want to know? I was a bad daughter. I'm actually doing Father's Day tonight because of the production <laughs> Um, I had a six-hour rehearsal. We, I basically had classes from 9.30 in the morning, right. and we weren't done until about 6, 7 o'clock in the evening, just with production stuff. So um, so that means we're extra privileged to have you in studio you today. That, that's what I'm hearing. You absolutely are. No, I'm, I'm actually privileged to be in such great company. Okay. Well, I'm going to give you some advice for your for, oh. your, for your dirty 30-year-olds. Okay. Wow. Okay. He's giving advice. Yes. He, Let me hear wow. Share it. Because I'm sure that a lot of the women that are on that side are angry and bitter. So that being said, <laughs> wait, well, wait, they, where are they you getting this they're from? They're going to be now. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, I think this year was a pinnacle year for women to to finally grasp what 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 men want. We're in June, but apparently Arvin has summed up. He <sighs> surmised the entire, the entire year. year. Wait, where are you getting this? I'm from? talking. I'm talking about Father's Day. Oh, okay, just, fa- just Father's Day. Okay, because. You know, every birthday, every Father's Day, every whatever you want to call it that's based around a man, always, what do you want? Get dressed. Get up. Do this. Let's do that. The kids want to take you here. You want to go there? Like, no, just leave me the hell alone. (laughs) You take the kids and get the hell out of the house. That's your Father's Day gift. (laughs) Yes. So the reason I bring that up is because I was actually on social media and I saw a lot of men playing golf, hanging out by the pool, barbecuing. Smoking a cigar, and now one's not even paying attention because we had pictures for all this. Uh, you know, scotch, cigar, that kind of thing, relaxing things, things to where they could be isolated and just kind of decompress. So I'm just throwing that out through, let women know, you know, twice a year, just leave them alone, just let them let, let them hang out but in you the know backyard. The funny part about his statement: he's single, no children. And lives at home with his mom in the basement. We're roommates, I told you. <laughs> Damn it. So I don't know why. I have no comment. I don't why know why. He's commenting about yes. It. That's why I'm at a loss. Why is he so angry about angry women? Tell us the truth. So you want to celebrate <laughs> Father's Day even though you're not a father. <laughs> That's and, the part. and you want your mom not to, keep, to stop coming down into the basement. What did you yeah, do? Yeah, that's it. That's <laughs> it. What did I do? Um, I had some tacos. Had a cigar, uh, did some reading, and had some drinks in the backyard. But did you hear how agitated he was? It's like as he was reading his post, He's he was angry. getting angry. Yes, it's the story of my life for I'm the last couple of years. That you're the one, perhaps, when you're dating, you're the one that's that's transferring. But, you know, you should go see a psychiatrist. I'm transferring what? I'm, issues. I'm, look at me. I'm, you, a, ver- I'm, a, anger I'm issues. a very, I'm a very happy person. Look at me. God damn it. <laughs> <laughs> 
Wow. Okay, and the phone is ringing. Watch. That's going to be one of these angry women that oh you're pissing God. off. <laughs> See, I told you, women are angry. She's probably one of those dirty 30-year-olds. <laughs> Wow. Uh, it's dirtyand30.com, by the way. Let's get it right before we screw the name out. You know out what? Completely. I'm going to buy that website today. Dirty 30-year-olds. It might be taken. I hope it is. I truly, truly hope it is. Because if that's the case, I'm getting the towels and the thongs and starting a website. Would somebody like to ask Arvin a question? Hello. 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 What's your name? Adrian. Wait a minute. Is this a guy <laughs> Hi, who, who did you want to talk to? I have no idea. You said call, and I said okay. Oh, I'm sorry. This is through Twitter. How are you doing, Adrian? <laughs> Good. I, how are you? Yes. I'm, the, I'm the host of the F Word. I'm the one who said I like you just because of your name. Yeah. I, you know what? This brings up an interesting point. As of today, we actually exceeded 30,000 followers on Twitter. Woohoo! So Congratulations. Awesome. So we've been getting tweets like, love you just for your name. You guys rock. I would have seen Superman, but instead I stayed home and listened to you guys. <laughs> <laughs> okay, that's yes. awesome because Superman was really, really good. I uh, see. Uh, you know see what? Just ha- another hang baby. up on her now. Hang uh, up no, on her now. I love Adrian. Adrian, what'd you think of Henry Cavella Superman? So the the guy who played Superman. Yes. yes. So there's this big debate: is he too pretty? Is he not too pretty? Is he eye candy for the girls? I heard chi- I heard it described as a chick flick. And when I went, I said, "Well, I know why they thought it was why the men thought it was a chick flick because the women were intelligent and had deep characters and could stand up for themselves." You know what? I love clearly I, that I, makes it a chick flick. I love strong women. Any woman that can wrestle me to the ground, I'm all for. <laughs> and you're and you're willing to let them too, aren't you? Well, you know what? Some have actually o- overpowered me with, without having any say so. But uh, Adrian, I know that on your bio, you're an author. What what um, what have you written? My first book was Every Single Girl's Guide to Her Future Husband's Last Divorce. That's I'm actually <laughs> going to be on Huff Post that's Live a tomorrow wow. talking about uh, should lifetime alimony be abolished. But I'm, oh, I'm absolutely. A, Hell absolutely. no. Absolutely. Oh, my God. 40%? 40% of women, or oh, sorry, wait, 40% of households, the woman is the primary breadwinner. Yes, just like in my house. That's why I'm saying, hell no, I don't want it abolished. Because at the rate my wife is going in a couple more years, that hooker's going to make twice what I do. Okay? And when she throws my ugly ass out, I want half. No, no, no. But you're not going to get alimony. You're not going to get alimony. Why? Because because it's not designed for you. Uh, The world is changing. The world is changing. It's nope. becoming a more sensitive place. I'll get going all red. It. I, I believe me. I am all for <laughs> equality. I am the prenup <laughs> goddess. I do not think women should be getting married for a paycheck. I think it's wrong. Matter of fact, my divorce. We have a hundred percent overlapping custody. No alimony. No child support. The judge looked at me a little sideways. I'm like, you'll never see us again. She's like, done. Hey, <laughs> Adrian, <laughs> done. Wh- Adrian, where are, you ca- where are you calling from? I'm in Reno, Nevada. Oh, you're right down the street. I used to be in California where divorce was, you know, pretty spectacularly biased, but we did a lot of good work there and now it's now it's quite a bit more even. And out of curiosity, what what is the Adrian Ashley show? Well, the Adrian Ashley show actually got its name changed to the F word. <laughs> the F word. The F word. Oh. It's the final word. But there's so many good F words like fun, finance, family. Fiscally responsible. Yeah, I like I like F you better. Th- that's that's two words. <laughs> <laughs> I know, but you know what's funny is I posted on Facebook because I found this awesome logo for it, and it's an F, but it's a smiley face, but it's cool. And I said, oh my god, I need a really good F word. And everybody kept going, well, you know, the original's been around for so long, you might. Just want to put it up. <laughs> and I thought, well, why do I have to actually put a name to it, and then I can have an F word of the day. All right. Every day. Well, Ashley, uh, Ashley, I'm sorry. Adrian. Wow. <laughs> Adrian, my apologies. We're, we're coming down to the wire. How can people reach you? <laughs> <laughs> they can uh, follow me on Twitter at the F Word TV, uh, which would be awesome because we just launched. So we do not have 30,000 followers, or they can follow me on Twitter at Adrian, A D R Y E N N. And happy to talk to any of the people who listen to you because you guys rock. Wow. That's what I'm talking about. 30,000. Apparently, that's the magic number for qual- <laughs> for quality calls. Adrian, thank Absolutely. you so much for calling in. Have a great night. Thank you. You too. Bye-bye. Take care. Arvin? What? 
Wow, I, I got nothing for you on that one. Uh, you couldn't even get her name right. Ashley, huh? Now, before we go. I was, I was waiting for Arvin to All right, ask well, we got her. 20 seconds. Go. No, no before we go, uh, your event again, June 22nd. Cal Poly Pomona, Cal Poly, 4, 4 p.m. 4 p.m., okay. All right, I want to thank special in-studio guest, Rasha Goel, for tolerating us for two hours. I want to thank all of the callers, especially the one from... Uh, Jean Morrison. Well, Jean Morrison's caller. She was spectacular. <laughs> uh, for those of you that uh, can tolerate more of us, we're on uh, Thursday, 5 to 6 p.m., Pacific Standard Time, and if you're in the local area, you can actually hear us in your car on your way home from work. And that's how you do a show!